What is going on everybody on YouTube? Steve here with Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. Coming back to you guys with another live show. I am also one of the admins of the Green Room over at greenroomuniversity.com. A little bit about myself. I quit my job working at the Cracker Barrel and a couple other dead-end jobs where I wasn't making much money, working nine to five. I was living at home with my parents. Quit my job about three years ago and I got started with Craigslist, buying and selling bicycles. One thing led to another. I started selling on eBay, went full-time on eBay, ended up moving out into a uh, storage locker, outgrew that, had my inventory at about thousand plus clothing items and ended up getting an office. Uh, did that full time for a couple of, for a couple of years. Transitioned into Amazon FBA, Kindle Publishing, whole bunch of other various online businesses, and uh, here I am, 2016. Uh, I had taken a little time off from eBay for a while, and I went full time Amazon FBA. But now I'm doing eBay part time. I'm running an Amazon FBA business. And also, I am one of the admins of the green room, like I said before, and obviously, I have a YouTube channel, Rake and Profit. So, uh, this month was probably one of my better months on eBay. Uh, did about $6,000 on eBay. Granted, I did sell a really high end camera that sold for about $2,000, but really passionate about eBay. I think it's a great opportunity. You know, there's a lot of money to be made, specifically with a clothing business on eBay. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Today we're gonna to be going through how to start a clothing business on eBay. And this is gonna be a complete step-by-step -step tutorial. So we're gonna be covering a whole bunch of things today from signing up with eBay and, and getting your PayPal account linked up and how exactly to do all that. Uh, the supplies and equipment that you're gonna to need to start a eBay clothing business where to find profitable used clothes. Big question everybody always has is, you know, should I sell men's clothing or should I sell women's clothing? So we're gonna cover that topic as well. We're gonna talk about what are the best clothing items to sell because there's a lot of various types of clothes. So I'm gonna share with you my experience, what I have found to uh, work the best for me, which has yielded me the most profits. We're gonna talk about how to determine what to pay for a clothing item, which is huge. And I've got a lot of notes on that. We're gonna talk about creating a listing schedule, putting routines, habits, and rituals together in order to help you to magnify your results and succeed much quicker and for the long term. And we're also gonna be talking about education and answering a few miscellaneous common questions that people have. So with that being said, let's make sure that the sound is working properly. So I'm gonna do a little sound test real quick and answer a few miscellaneous. All right, the sound is working properly. I do wanna thank each and every one of you guys for watching live right now. If you are on the Green Room email list, again, I appreciate you guys subscribing to that list and hopefully we have been able to add value to your life. If you're watching live on YouTube right now, Thanks for being a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber already, subscribe to this channel because there's a lot of content coming out from making money with books to selling clothing to a whole bunch of different facets of reselling. So uh, really excited to have you guys here. If you are excited for the show, I want you to do me one big favor and smash that like button. Hit the like button. We got about 73 people watching live right now so hit that like button subscribe show some love the comment section is alive and kicking right now we've got jason t smith in the house saying woohoo i see artwork it's right there jason you inspired this jason i just want to let you know you're the man who inspired that piece of artwork right there we've got jennifer m in the house what's going on jennifer good to see you bill simus in the house, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, Wicked Resale, Ed Sandoval, what's going on? We've got Jennifer saying, Rakin is one of the most knowledgeable and generous YouTubers in the resale game, smashing that like button. I appreciate that, I really do. Just an average guy sharing my journey, sharing the story, and hopefully uh, it can help you out. Susan H, Global Gibby, got a lot of people in the comment section right now. Jason loves, I don't know what you love, if it's the artwork, man, Appreciate it. I appreciate it. I got a lot of artwork in this house. 
Trevi Bumps, what's going on, Trevi? So let's dive into the show, guys. Again, smash that like button, show some love, but let's get the show on the road. I will be jumping into the comment sections periodically. So let's get started with uh, number one. If you're brand spanking new to the resell game, maybe you're coming from Amazon and you want to diversify a little bit and make money on eBay, or maybe you've never sold anything in your entire life. How do you get started selling clothing on eBay? Well, the first thing you're going to have to do is sign up for an eBay account. There's a lot of videos out there that can help you out. Just go to eBay, register account. You're going to have to create your username, your password. They're going to want you to put in your um, some of your personal information. It's been a while since I did mine, but I'm assuming they're going to probably want a uh, banking account, a credit card on file. This may be with PayPal or this may be with eBay. They're kind of two things that you have to link up together. It's a little different than... Um, Amazon, but sign up for an eBay account, fill out all that personal information. Also, go over to paypal.com, fill out all that information. I know they're going to want a checking account and checking account number over there. They're probably going to want your social security number. So, if you're going to be selling under your own name, doing business as your name, you're going to put your social security number. If you're doing a uh, if you're running your business under an LLC or a corporation, then I'm assuming you're going to want to put your EIN number, which is pretty much the social security number of a business. So that's step number one right there. You've got to get started. You've got to sign up for your eBay account. You've got to sign up for your PayPal account. And I believe when I did this, it took a couple days because with PayPal, they typically drop like a penny or two into your checking account. And then they're going to want you to go in and confirm what that amount was to show proof that you are, uh, in fact, the owner of that checking account to be able to link up the PayPal and the eBay. Because when somebody pays through uh, eBay, when they purchase an item, they're actually paying through PayPal. So when you get the money, it's actually going to go into your PayPal account, which then you're going to have to move over into your actual checking account. So that's step number one right there. You're going to want to sign up for that eBay and that PayPal account. Step number two. So you're all signed up. You're ready to roll. You're excited. You're pumped up. You're like, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to go find some clothing items. Now, we're not at the point yet where you're going to decide if you're going to go with men's clothing or women's clothing. I'm going to give my take on that. But at this point, it's a good idea to get some basic supplies and equipment ready for your business. Now, one tip of advice I have for you guys is don't go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars on all the top high-end, most expensive supplies, thinking to yourself that, you know, in order for me to be successful, I've got to have the best equipment, the best supplies. You know, I have to have this software. I need to have this and that. It's not the case at all. What I'd recommend is if you're brand spanking new, Get started on a budget, really. Get started on a budget in terms of equipment. You don't need to go out and buy a MacBook Pro. You don't need to buy one of these, which is a Canon 70D camera right here, a DSLR camera. Don't go out and buy one of these. It's really not necessary when you're brand new. When you're brand new, you need to prove to yourself that I can do this. And the, the easiest way to build confidence and build up your, um, how do I say it, just your momentum is to just get started selling items. And I tell you right now, if you're like a level five out of 10 in terms of like your motivation and you're like, I could do this and your belief and your faith, if you're a five out of 10 on a scale of one through 10, once you sell your first item, your second item, your third item, you're gonna get to a six, a seven, an eight, and a nine. And for all you folks out there, you know, green room members, folks who are already in the game reselling for a while, once you get that fifth, sixth, seventh sale and you taste that success, you're hooked. I'm telling you, you're like a fish with a hook through the lip and there ain't no way you getting out of that lake without coming in the boat. Weird example, but seriously, you will get hooked. So you want to make those first few sales. So what's the basic equipment you're going to need to start your eBay clothing business? Well, you don't really need any equipment to be honest with you, but if you want to look professional, if you want to look professional, I'd recommend getting a mannequin. So this is actually a dress form mannequin right here. And it's going to give it a little more of a three-dimensional, is, is that what it's called? I don't know. But it's going to give it a more kind of crisp look. Now this mannequin right here has a little wooden base, also has a nice little 
wooden base at the top as well, which actually screws off. But this is called a dress form mannequin. You can find a dress form mannequin for sale uh, on eBay or Amazon. After this live show, I'll be sure to create some links and some um, resources for you guys. But just type in dress form mannequin on eBay or Amazon, and you can find a bunch of them. Uh, this one right here, I believe this one was 85 bucks or $75. So it's not super, super uh, expensive, uh, but it's definitely worth it. It helps to give your items you know, a nicer, cleaner look, Help, helps to differentiate your listings from other sellers, which is really nice. So um, again, this is gonna cost you a little bit of change. So if you're not super, super serious, you could actually start with a hanging mannequin. Now, the difference between a dress form mannequin and a hanging mannequin is the dress form, you know, it's, it's kind of three-dimensional. It's sitting on a base. You know, it's, it's like a real body. Whereas the hanging mannequin is, it's kind of like a split half body and it hangs right off the wall. So what you would do is you would put a little nail in your wall and hang it right off. Type in hanging mannequin to eBay and Amazon. Um, those are about 20 or 30 bucks. They're plastic, uh, but it'll do the job. It'll help to differentiate your listings from what most people are doing. And you know what most people are doing? They're throwing their item on the floor and trying to make it look nice. You know, the cat's in the background. It's kind of just a uh, messy look in the background. So even if you just get a dress for a mannequin for 20 or 30 bucks, you're going to be ahead of the game. All right, I'm just looking through the comments. Looks like we got about 100 people watching. And funny thing is, look at this. I just got an offer on a Pendleton item. And let's let's do this live right now. Let's check this out. So I just got an offer on a, let's check it out. Respond to offer. A buyer has made an offer for $24. And uh, you know what? I had it for sale for $29.99. I'm going to accept it. So here it is. Bada bing, bada boom. Let's accept it. Hopefully it goes to Ching. That would be cool. My cha-ching hasn't been working all the time on my phone lately, but let's see. Is it going to cha-ching? Come on, please, do it live. Doesn't want it to cha-ching for me. Anyways, I uh, just accepted an offer on a Pendleton item, and that's funny because this is a Pendleton right here. But anyways, um, in terms of supplies and equipment, a mannequin is definitely something that I'd highly recommend. Uh, also, a few things you're going to want to get poly bags and poly mailers right here. Um, the poly bag is nice because when you go to fold up your item, when you sell your, when you sell your Pendleton item, which I'm going to uh, obviously ship out probably today if they pay, I'm going to fold it up nice. I'm going to throw it in this poly bag, right? I'm going to close it up. Sometimes also another tip is I'll, I'll cut a little piece of, uh, what are those little uh, laundry sheets that you put in the laundry that smell good? I'll put a little tiny, tiny piece in the poly bag with the item. Makes it smell really nice and really fresh. Just don't put too much in it. Um, so that's a little tip right there. Fold this thing up and then throw it in here. Now, when I sell things that are first class mail, so that's 16 ounces or less, which is most t-shirts, button front shirts, um, some sweaters that are really light, cashmere sweaters and whatnot, um, most clothing items that are, you know, on a smaller side, I'm not talking about jeans. I'm not talking about jackets can go first class. Now, first class is 16 ounces. If you're shipping through eBay shipping online, if you go into the post office in a physical location, they're going to, they're going to cap that first class at 13 ounces. So make sure you're shipping through eBay. You're going to get discounts. You're going to save time. It's, it's a big help right there. <clears throat> This is key, guys. This is a key piece of equipment that you need if you're starting your eBay clothing business. Tape measure. Very, very important. Always include measurements when you're selling clothing on eBay. Now, I've talked to other sellers who they say they don't do it. They say they've gotten away with it. They haven't had any problems. Um, you know, that's fine if you want to go that route. But for me personally, I hate getting a return. I hate getting that message from What's his name saying, you know what? I got the Pendleton shirt. Looks great, but it doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. It's a little smaller than I expected for a, for a large or an extra large. So the easiest way to get around that and to uh, be able to cushion yourself against that risk is to improve, uh, include 
The measurements for a shirt like this, I'm going to include three measurements. I'm going to lay this out flat. I'm going to go with the chest measurement, which is from pit to pit, right under these seams. I'm going to also go with the length. I like to do the length from the top of the collar down to the hem of the shirt. And then the third measurement that I like to include is the sleeves. So I'm going to go with this little seam right here at the shoulders down to the cuff. I'm going to include those three measurements. Uh, in terms of other uh, pieces of equipment you're going to need to get started with your clothing business, obviously you're going to have to take pictures. Like I said, you know that's a high-end camera. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, if you want to go with a camera, a really good camera is a uh, the Canon Elf series. So the 300 HS, the 330, uh, the 110 HS. Uh, the Canon Elf uh, Power Shot is a little point and shoot camera. It's a little tiny one, but it's a great camera. It does really well. And that's what I used to use. Uh, now I'm listing all of my clothing items on my phone. So I have an iPhone. The eBay app is spectacular. They, they've improved it tenfold. And I'll tell you right now, I'm not going back to listing on a camera. Again, it's so much quicker. Pretty much what I do is I find an item. I sell it. I, I do sell like item. Fills out a lot of the information for me. I write a description, snap the pictures real quick my iPhone. Bada bing, bada boom. Clothing profits are coming soon. So um, if you've got a smartphone, if you have an iPhone, it's really, really good. The Android, I don't know. I used to have the Android. It doesn't seem to do as well, but maybe some will beg to differ. Um, in terms of other set uh, equipment and supplies you're going to need, the, the really the last big one that I want to talk about, and this is the most important um, piece of the puzzle in terms of taking really good pictures. I've talked about this before. A lot of people think that picture quality has to do with the camera, right? That's a $1,500 camera right there. You probably get it for $1,000 on Amazon right now. Um, that camera versus this phone, which one's better? Well, I'll tell you right now, if I'm using that camera and I have horrible lighting, right? If I have horrible lighting, you know, I'm in a dark room, the picture's going to look like crap. I don't care if you have a $5,000, a $10,000, $100,000 a $100,000 camera. Um, you know, I'm kind of going crazy right now. But if you don't have good lighting, you've got nothing. Now, which one's better, the iPhone or that? Well, if there's not really good lighting and I'm using that, but I've got great lighting with this, this is going to kick that Canon 70D DSLR camera's butt all day long. So lighting's important. How do you get really good lighting? Easiest ways to get yourself a little uh, photography uh, lighting kit. I've got one right now. I'm going to see if I can show you a little bit right here. Um, so those are some lights that I have right there. Um, got them off Amazon or eBay. I don't remember. Um, let me move this camera a little more. But you can get them for like 30 or 40 bucks. It's a little lighting kit. Um, it's got the, the, the legs. It's got the light that you attach with the umbrellas to diffuse the light. It's really cheap. But get yourself a uh, lighting kit. That's probably the most important thing that you need. Um, if you've got good daylight, if you've got the sun coming through, if you've got some blinds and stuff, you can get away with it without having the umbrella lights and whatnot. Um, but really, just get them. They're cheap. It'll help you so much. You can take pictures anywhere. Um, also, you're going you're gonna to want a nice, clean background. So I've been taking pictures right here. I've been using this nice, clean, white background with this picture right here. I know some of you folks can't stand it. You say, why do you have that? I like it. I think it, yeah, I think it does well. Um, but if you don't want to have like a picture or a portrait in the background, you can just shoot against a nice clean white background. If you don't have a clean white background, you can buy a backdrop, which is pretty much three bars and you overlay like some paper. Um, I forget what it's called, um, but it's like studio photography background paper. Um, and you can just put that on and, and have yourself a clean background. Um, but really, if you're starting on a budget, just get a clean white background. Get, go against the wall. It will look fine. Let's see what is going on in the comments section. I'm going to take a break, catch my breath for a second. If you guys are enjoying this so far, do me a big favor and hit that like button. Definitely would appreciate that. helps me out a lot. So Pittsburgh Mike says, I have an Android phone and my computer is faster. I do a lot of clothes and it's easier uploading pics and writing things out. So, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has their own styles. For me personally, you know, in terms of speed, it might be a little faster on a computer. 
but it's more streamlined for me and it's the process is easier. Um, the process for me is easier just doing it on the phone. It's not as easy to write, you know, to put your templates and write, you know, a large description, but I've been experimenting with very short descriptions, you know, up for sale is blank good condition. Here are the measurements. Thank you for looking at this listing. Bada bing, bada boom, it's done. And things have been selling. So, um, you know, that's the cool thing. Everybody has their own opinions, what works best for them. Just try out both and, and do what you think is best. Steve, I love all the information you give and how positive you are. I made my first few sales on eBay and super excited about doing more. So glad you guys are enjoying this content. So here we are clearing clutter for clarity. That's a cool name. Clearing clutter for clarity. I agree with listing from phone. So some people like the phone. Some people like the computer. What's up, Frank Rizzo? Good to see you. Hun Lim 2156. Good to see you. Uh, Jabbar Richardson, trying to get started with this eBay movement. You have great info. I have a few things listed. Uh, sold one thing so far. Keep listing. Keep listing. So anyways, guys, we talked about signing up for eBay, signing up for your PayPal, getting that started. We also touched on some of the important supplies and equipment. There's obviously more like clothing racks, clothing hangers. Um, a good thing to get is a, uh, a steamer because sometimes you're going to have wrinkled clothes. So you're going to want to steam out the wrinkles. There's a lot of various uh, pieces of equipment, but really when you're brand new, like I said, get the poly bags, get the poly mailers. Get yourself a hanging mannequin if you're on a budget. If you've got a few extra bucks, go with the dress form mannequin. You know, get your tape, get your boxes. Go to USPS.com. Get all the flat rates. Get all the boxes so you can ship cheap. You know, if you have a phone, list from your phone. Um, but that's pretty much the equipment. Let's move on to number three out of nine. So if you guys are just coming in, we're talking about how to start a clothing business on eBay, a complete step-by-step -step tutorial. We talked about getting started, signing up for your account, eBay, PayPal. We talked about equipment that you need, some basic stuff. Now we're gonna talk about where to find profitable used clothing. So there's one that really stands out to me the most. The best way to get clothing, really cheap clothing, is going to thrift stores. Yes, going to thrift stores. Thrift in, hitting the thrift stores. Uh, in my area, I live in Connecticut, we have a couple thrift stores that are pretty um, pretty abundant. We have a couple Salvation Armies, we have a Goodwill, and we have Savers. Those are the three big kind of corporate uh, thrift stores that we have in our area, and those keep me busy. Those keep me plenty busy. Granted, I'm only doing it part time, but when I was doing it when I was doing it full time and I was listing over 100 clothing items per week. I had no problem finding clothes. You know, sometimes I had to travel out 30, 40, 50 miles, you know, a couple times per month to load up and take advantage of the half off sales. Uh, but yeah, those are the thrift stores that are in my area. You may also have the same ones. If not, you may have some mom and pop thrift stores. Some, what is that other thrift store? The red, white, the red, white, and blue. Um, thrift stores are the best, in my opinion. Thrift stores are the best way to come across. Uh, profitable clothing. And the reason is, is because, you know, you walk into, into any thrift store in America, you're going to typically find that there's two items that stick out the most in, ter in terms of abundance and there being the most of that type of item. Uh, number one is clothing. Number two is books. And that's why I love selling both of those books and clothing, because when you get numbers like that, when you get tons of uh, clothing pieces, um, you know, there's opportunities there because Things slip through the cracks. The competition can't check all the clothing. And just with numbers, there's opportunities. So um, thrift stores, that's probably the best way to find clothing. Also, there's garage sales. If you go on the weekends, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or even estate sales, you can find clothing. I just popped on a really nice camel hair, 100% uh, camel hair Brooks Brothers uh, sport coat the other day for 10 bucks at an estate sale. I hope to sell that for maybe 50 or 60 bucks, but estate sales are great. You can find a lot of vintage items there, garage sales. You never know. Now clothing typically isn't abundant at garage sales, but every now and then you'll find something nice. I mean, I've popped on leather jackets. I popped on vintage items. You know, you never know. There's definitely some good opportunities there. And another way to get started selling clothing to be able to find clothes to sell and this may or may not work out for you depending on if you've got a uh, 
expensive taste in fashion, but start selling clothes around your house, right? Take a look in your closet. Maybe you've lost some weight or maybe you've put on some weight. I don't know, but maybe you have some clothes that you don't wear anymore and uh, you could start listing them up on eBay. So those are the three methods I recommend for finding clothes to get started. Thrift stores, garage sales, also estate sales and selling stuff around your house when you're getting started. You know, the bread and butter for me was always thrift stores, always thrift stores. So I'm going to jump in the comments right now, answer some questions. See what is happening in here. Appreciate all the likes guys. It looks like we're up to 71 likes so far. So I definitely appreciate that. If you guys haven't already, I want to mention real quick, if you haven't already gotten our free book in the green room, a hundred amazing items to resell, get that in the description. That's a little free gift we have. And uh, yeah, you'll definitely enjoy it. Axel says, I'm fortunate to have Goodwill, Savers, and Salvation Armies in every corner here in Massachusetts. So yeah, I've, I've run through Massachusetts. I've gone through um, Springfield. I know they have a few Savers over there. Uh, Chicopee, Mass. There's a lot of opportunities. What is it? Framingham, I believe there's a Savers, if I'm pronouncing that town correctly. But yeah, there's definitely a lot of opportunities for clothing in Massachusetts if you live out there. So Kevin Adams said, you said you're only doing this part-time. Uh, why not full-time anymore? So clothing is very, very time consuming. It's very time consuming. Uh, I also run an Amazon business. I'm an admin of the green room. I've got a few other businesses as well. I'm running a YouTube channel full-time. So there's only so many, uh, there's so, only so many hours in the day. And for me, I'm, I'm very uh, interested in having a di diverse income. I like to have multiple income streams and I have about four or five main ones that I focus on. So the reason why I'm not full time is just because I've got a few other things going on. And for me personally, it doesn't align going full time hundred percent with eBay with my goals. But for you, it may, I was, I was full time eBay for two years. So, um, you know, I always say this each, each year that you're a reseller, it's a stepping stone to something new. You know, you might start with like, for example, me, I started with Craigslist and selling bikes and that was a stepping stone to eBay. And then eBay was a stepping stone to Amazon FBA and Kindle publishing and all these other things. And then eventually you get to the point where you can choose if you want to juggle a few things or if you want to go full time into something, but that's up to you and your goals. Um, a lot of people are always worried about, you know, should I do what they're doing? Or, you know, I see this person going full time. That means I should go full time eBay may, might not be full uh, a good fit for you full time. It might be good part time. You know, if you're working a full time corporate job, it might be smart only to do it 10 or 15 hours per week. It really depends on your goals. That's why it's so important to have goals and have a strong sense of where you want to go in this life and uh, what direction you're moving in with your business and goals and whatnot. What do you do when USPS has the product delivered? customer says he didn't get it. Um, if they open up a claim, I just send the tracking number to PayPal and I usually win. So um, as long as you have the tracking, if you're shipping directly through the eBay system, you'll automatically have that tracking. If you're shipping on your own and you're going to the post office, which don't do it, you're, you're wasting a lot of time and money. Um, you'll just upload your tracking. So oh, I just got another offer Man, eBay is on fire today. So I just got an offer for, let's check this live. Um, so I actually have a Black and Decker uh, power scissors. It was selling for seventy nine ninety nine. Just got an offer for fifty bucks on that. So I'm gonna think about that. But pretty cool. I don't know why my notifications are going off, but my chings aren't going off. Um. So last month I only did. I was I was going very very part time with my eBay business, and I sold I don't know, like a thousand item, a thousand dollars or. Um, not even, I don't even know, like a thousand dollars in July and then August I did about 6,000. So here are my numbers so far, 106 items sold for 69, uh, $6,928 and 54 cents. So you guys can see that right there, um, that I actually sell on eBay. But anyways, let's keep moving along. All right. So let's talk about should you sell women's or men's clothing? 
a lot of people, they always ask Steve, you know, which route should I take? I know that you sell men's clothing, but you know, do you think there's a better opportunity with women's clothing? So I can only speak from my own experience and my experience over the last three years has been selling men's clothing. So I've only sold men's clothing. I've experimented with a couple women's items. Um, you know, I sold just recently, I sold a uh, North phase, uh, fleece jacket. It was a women's sold for 30 bucks, picked it up for $5 from a thrift store. So, you know, I sell a little bit of women's clothing, but I, I just don't have a ton of experience. Uh, from my experience and from what I've heard, I think men's clothing is the way to go from, from what I've heard from other sellers is women's clothing is a tougher game. Uh, as you know, women's bodies, they're a little different than men's. They're a little pickier, as you know, and it's a lot easier to get returns with women's clothing. That's what I've heard. Um, but I highly recommend you jump into men's clothing because from my experience, from selling well over $100,000 in clothing on eBay over the last couple of years, um, you know, I was full time at one point. There's a lot of opportunities with men's clothing, you know, and uh, we're going to talk about a little later on what types of clothing specifically you should deal with. Uh, when you're first getting in, but I think that men's clothing poses a great opportunity. There's so many items that you can buy and sell. There's a big demand for it and guys want to look good. They want to look good, but most guys don't want to go to the store and spend 50, 60, 70 bucks for a Ralph Lauren. They'd rather come on eBay and pay 15, 20 bucks. So there's a great opportunity to make money on eBay with men's clothing. And I'd recommend just from my experience, you know, I've done it. I've succeeded with it. I have plenty of friends who are full-time eBay sellers selling men's clothing. You can do it. You can make it happen. There's no doubt. So in my opinion, if you were to ask me, which, which route should you take? I would say men's clothing. Obviously it's super biased because I've never really had much experience selling women's clothing. Uh, but the return rates are fairly low with men's clothing. I've heard, again, I've never really sold much of it, um, but I've heard that women's clothing could, could pose a threat in terms of returns and they're a little pickier. So from my experience, I would say go men's clothing. So what type of clothing sells best? Let's just talk in terms of men's clothing. What types of men's clothing sells best? To be honest with you, it all sells. It all sells, but let's talk in, in, in the sense of someone who's brand spanking new and maybe they're on a budget. Maybe they only have a couple hundred bucks a month to spend. What type of items sell best on a budget in terms of, you know, spending money, acquiring it, putting out your money for the cost of goods. What should you focus on? If you're brand spanking new, I'd say the best direction is to start off with more of the simple basic items. So I'm talking about T-shirts. I'm talking about short sleeve button front shirts. Almost knocked into my pal right here. Long sleeve shirts like this. Long sleeve shirts, casual shirts, uh, button front shirts, shorts, uh, jeans. Simple things like that. Very simple things like that. I would say, you know, if you're new, I would probably wait a little while, maybe 30 to 60 days until you start messing with blazers and sport coats and suits and more higher end advanced items like that. You can get into it if you're willing to study and educate yourself. And I actually have a full out course on how to sell blazers, sport coats and suits. It's called Blazing Profits. So if you type into Google Blazing Profits, Raken or uh, you know Blazing Profits, you'll find it. It's a whole course. It's a 200, I don't know, 250 page book, videos, interviews, templates, all that stuff. Um, so if you're brand new, I would get blazing profits. I wouldn't try doing it yourself if you're first starting off, but really I would say stick with the button front shirts, the shorts, the simple, easy to sell items. There's really not much to it. And, um, I found that like a really good staple is, is always button front shirts. I love button front shirts and there's so many brands out there. Um, let me show you a couple items that I have right here. Uh, this is a really good brand right here. This is Nat Nast. I don't know if you can see that label. N-A-T-N-A-S-T. -N here is a 100%, I believe this is silk, button front shirt with spread, actually, yep, spread collar, uh, long sleeves, cool design. Uh, Nat Nast, it's an awesome brand. Vineyard Vines, one of my favorite brands. Uh, focus on some high-end Italian brands, Canali, Ermini Gildo, Yegna. Um, there's so many profitable brands out there, it's absolutely ridiculous. 
And I could go on and on days for days talking about what brands you should buy. Here's another good brand. I also forgot to mention jackets. Jackets are very profitable sweaters. Um, here's a nice little uh, fleece jacket right here by the brand of Patagonia. Patagonia, one of my favorite brands. I love Patagonia. If you can find the fleeces that have like unique colors or cool patterns or designs, cha-ching. I'm talking really big money. Um, I paid, I think I paid, I don't know if the price tag's still on it, four or five bucks. This should probably go between 30 and 40 bucks, I'm assuming. I got to do a little more research. Um, dress pants. You can make really good money with dress pants. Um, this is a really good brand right here. The brand is Zanella, Z-A-N-E-L-L-A. -L -L -A. Great pair of dress pants right here. Very nice. Ended up paying half off of $7.99, so I paid four bucks. Probably sell these for $20 to $35, depending on how high I want to price it. And here's another great brand to mess with. The brand is called Nudie Jeans, N-U-D-I-E, Nudie Jeans. Jeans, really good uh, pair of jeans right there. Awesome brand. But there's so many brands out there to focus on, from Ralph Lauren to Brooks Brothers. Like I said, uh, Patagonia, Nudie Jeans, um, Viella. There's there's a million brands out there, guys. So do your research, study up. I also have a few other books: 101 Killer Clothing Brands and 102 Killer Clothing Brands. So that's 203 brands right there. Um, those are two different eBooks that I sell as well. If you're interested in those, check the description. Um, but there's so many brands out there, so many brands that can make you money. But if you're new, focus on the casual shirts, the jeans, the shorts, the dress pants. Um, just get started. There's so many various items out there. All right. How to determine what to pay. So you're at a thrift store and let's just say that you come across, come across this Patagonia item. You're flipping through, you know, you know what motion this is, right? Hold on, how am I positioned? Okay. You're flipping through the brands, boom, 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 boom. And then you see this and you're like, whoa, Patagonia. I heard about that from Steve, made in the USA. You haven't seen the tag yet. We're going to have a little example here. You haven't seen the tag yet. You don't know how much it's selling for, but how do you get in your mind the maximum price that you'd be willing to pay for that? So what I would do is I would pull out my cell phone. I would go over to eBay. I would go to search. I would type in Patagonia men's fleece full zip large, right? And I would look for a similar item on here. Now, these are all the items that are for sale. What you're going to want to do is hit filter, show more and sold listings. Make sure the condition is used. Make sure that it is within the United States. If you're selling within the United States, if you sell buy it now versus auction, which we're going to talk about later, make sure you choose that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flip through. I'm going to flip through and I'm going to try to find a similar item which is sold, right? I want to find a Patagonia that's a full zip, that's the same color, that looks similar, buy it now. Auction, a lot of times auctions are going to sell for way less than it's actually worth if you're willing to wait a month or two, which I highly recommend. Um, but again, depending on your business model, it's going to differ for you. But find a similar item. This is the same way that they do it in real estate, right? For any of the real estate agents out there, the number one way that you typically price an item is based on comparable sales. What have other houses, what have other three bedroom, two bathroom houses, same square footage, you know, same whatever in that neighborhood sold for over the last six months, over the last year? And you're going to take that information, those comparable sales, and you're going to pretty much assess, you know, how, how, how similar is it? And you're going to price it based on that. It's the same way with eBay, right? Same way with a Pendleton item. I would look it up. Pendleton large plaid sold listings. So I see one that sells for 25, one for 40, one for 30, one for 38. You can kind of gauge what it is, right? So let's just say that we gauge that that Patagonia is selling for 30 bucks all day long. The next thing that you're going to have to factor is the eBay fees, the eBay and PayPal fees. So eBay fees and PayPal fees combined is going to be about 12%. So 12% of $30 is, is 
a $30 sale is going to be a little over three bucks. So let's just say $4. So we have $4 just guessing that is going to be taken for fees. Okay. Next thing is we're going to have to estimate shipping. So for this, this is going to take experience. This is going to be the hard part. You already know this is more than 16 ounces. You can feel it. So we're not going to be able to ship it first class. Um, your next method is going to be probably a flat rate bubble mailer. If you can fit that in, honestly, I don't think that will fit. So probably your next best bet, there's not going to be any flat rates that are going to fit this uh, unless you could jam it into an envelope, but that's risky business. I wouldn't advise doing that. Um, you're probably going to be looking at just putting it in a plain box or possibly going FedEx smart post. But let's just say there's, there's a couple options, guys. There's really a couple options. Um, but let's just say we're going to estimate that it's going to be, and again, it may differ because if you're in Connecticut and you ship priority in a, in a brown box to New York, it's going to be like five or six bucks. But if you ship it to California, it's going to be 12. So let's just say it's going to be eight bucks to ship. Just going to take a median. <clears throat> So you got $4 fees, you're at eight bucks shipping costs so far. So now you're at $12 already in overhead. <coughs> so you take it, you open it up and you see that it's selling for $10, right? You see it's selling for $10. That's going to be your cost of goods right there. So now your cost of goods <coughs> is 10 bucks. So you've got the $4 in fees. The eight dollars in shipping, the twelve dollars, excuse me, the ten dollars in cost of goods. That's going to bring you to a grand total of twenty-two dollars. Now, also, got to factor in supplies and equipment, which you know you could just add a dollar to that, even though it's not going to be that much. But it is what it is. Also, you need to factor in. I always add a, a couple bucks for factoring in returns and different things like that. But let's just say you're in it for twenty-three bucks right now. Twenty-three bucks. Right, four dollars fees, eight bucks shipping. That's twelve bucks plus ten dollars cost of goods, tax, and everything. Dollar for just factoring on returns, different things like that. Supplies, twenty three bucks. So you're in it for twenty three bucks if you were to sell it, which would leave you with if you sold it for thirty dollars, seven dollars profit. Is it worth it for you to invest ten dollars? to make seven dollars is it now to determine that there's a bunch of different factors you're gonna to have to take into consideration right how strong is the sold listings are a bunch of them selling for 30 bucks or is one selling for 22 128 124 and then one for 40 and that's how you're getting 30 how strong are the sold listings <coughs> how confident are you how strong is the brand recognition is it a very very sought-after brand is it popular Patagonia is a great brand, great brand. And I can tell you right now, just from experience, I'd say that that's a good solid $30 fleece jacket, if not more. So to answer my own question, I'm confident in the sales price, the sales history. I'm confident in the brand recognition. Um, also, you need to take into consideration, you know, how much money do you have? Are you willing at this point, if you're brand new and you only have $100 a month to spend, are you willing to spend that $10 to only make seven? You know, granted, that is what, 70% ROI? I don't know. Is that worth it for you, right? Maybe your business model and what you're trying to focus on is spend two bucks or spend three bucks to make 40 bucks, right? Which is possible, you know? Pay three bucks in the state sale for a CC Filson 100% wool vest, sell it for, you know, 60. At the end of the day, you, you walk with 40. That stuff happens all the time. You know, you find a Ralph Lauren jacket, super rare. Um, or a crazy, you know, big bear polo sweater, you pay five, sell it for 200. I mean, these are hard to come by items, right? It's not going to happen every day, but is it worth it for you? What's your business model? That's why you need to take some time to ask yourself, how much money do I have to spend? What's my risk tolerance? How fast am I looking to turn items? And that's another factor. How quick does this sell? Take a look at the sold listings and look at the dates. You know, if, if, Today's what, September 2nd, and you see that one sold September 1st, August 29th, August 24th, August 23rd. You know, that's there's some good sales velocity there. But if you're looking and you see that, you know, it's sold July 4th and then May 20th, I mean, 
they're far and few in between. So it might take a while to get your $10 investment back. So um, how do you determine what to pay? Look at the fees, look at the shipping cost, factor in the cost of goods, factor in your profit. What's your time worth? You should have a number in your head of what you are worth. Are you looking to earn 10 bucks an hour? Are you looking to buy a job? Or are you trying to make 30 bucks an hour, 40 bucks an hour? That's up to you. Factor in the speed of sale. Factor in the equipment, supplies, and overhead. Factor in the returns because you are going to have a certain percentage of items you sell that get returned. And study the sold listings for comparable sales. That's super important right there. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just taking a look. Jason T. Smith is says, if you have muscles, it would fit. So yeah, if you've got muscles, you can fit that into a, a flat rate uh, bubble mailer if you can. Um, but not everybody has those Jason T. Smith muscles. <laughs> if you guys aren't following Jason T. Smith, subscribe to him right now. He's been putting on some phenomenal live shows. Last time I checked in, he had a um, permanent marker written all over his forehead. So if that's not exciting, I don't know what is. All right, let's keep moving. Uh, we're going to be answering up the, uh, opening up the floor in a few minutes for questions. Um, let's talk about creating a listing schedule routine. So it's imperative for your success to get into a habit, create a habit or ritual of listing. I can tell you right now from a lot of experience of selling on eBay, selling on Amazon, selling on Craigslist, you know, from doing all different types of businesses, the more consistent you are when you're playing in somebody else's sandbox, which is the case. You're playing an eBay sandbox. The more you give, the more you get. The more you give, the more you get. The harder you work, the more you list, the better chance is that you're going to make more sales. Now, there's obviously a lot of factors that come into play, but just to generalize things, the more you list, the more you put out there to the world, the more money you're going to make. So with that being said, you want to be consistent with your efforts, right? You want to be consistently listing items, whether it's on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, that could be five items a day, Monday through Friday. Or maybe you are working a corporate job or you're juggling different businesses, like in my case. And I try to dedicate a couple days to bang out a bunch of listings. <clears throat> the other day, I banged out 24 listings in about an hour and a half, just went balls to the walls crazy. And that was great for me. Um, but when I used to be full time, we used to try to list 10 items a day, 10 to 20 items a day. Then there was another time where I had an employee that I hired and he would come into the office and bang everything out in one day. It really depends on your situation. Um, you want to you wanna handcraft, tailor it to your own needs. You know, my needs are completely different than yours. Your needs are completely different than the next guys uh, watching this video. So tailor it to your own needs. But uh, I do want to say it's going to be a little slow at first. Um, you are going to be you are going to be limited to an extent when you first get started if you don't already have a eBay account that's built up, if you've never sold before, because you're going to get hit with something called selling limits. Selling limits. What does that mean? Well, eBay is going to pretty much put a limit to how many items you can sell and how much money you can sell within a certain time frame. I don't know off the top what that is. Um, I had recently gotten my girlfriend her eBay account started up and I remember um, they had limited to like one item and then when you verified something, they opened it to five and then, I don't know, once you sell a certain amount of items after 30 days, you can call them up and ask them, you know, can you increase my selling limits? I don't know exactly how it all works. Maybe some of the folks in the comments could be a little more specific. It's been a while for me, but you're going to get hit with selling limits. Um, so make sure you provide great customer service and make sure that you just list some of your best stuff up at first, but even then, you know, you're going to get capped off at a certain amount of money. So start your business two months before you're ready to start your business. If that makes any sense, don't start your business with a hundred items ready to list and you're down to your last penny and you need a thousand bucks or else you're going to freaking not be able to pay your bills. Don't do that because you're going to get stuck. You're going to get stuck really quick with the eBay selling limits. But after about a month, two months, three months, they're going to open up the floodgates to you. So uh, just know that. I like to focus on, and I like to recommend to people if they're brand new, focus on fast turning stuff, build your momentum, uh, let yourself know that it actually works because you know what? You can watch this video and that's great. You're learning and you're brand new. You've never sold anything. You know, I could be as enthusiastic, passionate. I could tell you, you know, look what I've done or I've sold for three years or check it out. I did $6,000 last month. Whoop-de-doo. It's not doing anything for your confidence. 
because your confidence is pretty much predicated on what you've uh, encountered and what you've done. If you've never sold anything, your confidence is going to be down here. That's why you got to start selling items to build up your confidence. And with confidence comes momentum. And with momentum comes clarity, purpose, and massive action. So um, just start selling items, start listing items, get the momentum uh, built up, and try to focus on faster turning items. You know, you could focus on long tail items and you know suits that you know may take nine months to sell for three hundred dollars, and you put up twenty five, but that's doing nothing for your confidence at first. So my recommendation, I would I would honestly mess with lower profit items at first that turn quicker to build up your momentum and build up your account and build up your feedback. Also, another thing to, to keep in mind is when you're new, your, your, your money isn't going to be delivered to you as quick. I remember when I recently started up my girlfriend's account, she had sold a couple items. She sold a tie. She sold a, um, a vest for like $25. And I said, I said to her, did you get the money? Did you move it into your account yet? And she said, it's still pending. And it was like over a week. So I don't know the specifics of exactly how it works, but I know when you're new, uh, they want you to prove yourself and they want to make sure that the, the customer's happy. They don't want you coming in, selling something, scamming a buyer, taking the money and bouncing off to another world. Um, so they are going to hold your money up a little bit. You are going to be faced with selling limits when you are first getting started. But this is really good and it's really smart that eBay does this because this assures that when you're brand spanking new, you're providing great customer service and you're adding value and you're taking care of your customers. Right, eBay customers aren't going to be coming on eBay anymore if the new sellers are coming and causing chaos and it's the wild, wild west and poor customer service is provided. That's going to hurt eBay's brand. It's going to hurt the quality of the experience. And overall, it's a good thing that they do this. I know it stinks when you're brand new and you're like, you know, they're limiting me to five items at 150 bucks. Like, what am I going to do with that? It is what it is, but people in the past have abused the system and, you know, they were forced to call their hand. So it is what it is. Just be prepared. So we ran through it all guys. That's it. That is the complete tutorial beginner's guide to getting started, um, building a profitable, hopefully a profitable clothing business on eBay. We talked about starting your account, eBay, PayPal, linking them all together, supplies and equipment that you need, where to find profitable used clothing, Discussed a little bit about my opinion on should you go men's or women's clothing. I know it was very biased. What type of clothing sells best, how to determine what to pay, creating a listing schedule, and all that good stuff. So um, we've got 142 people watching live. If you guys have found any value at all in this video, smash that like button, show some love. It really lets me know that I'm doing a good job and I'm helping people out. If you have any suggestions for future videos or anything that you'd like improved or discussed, leave a comment. Definitely uh, open to suggestions to continue improving these videos. If you're not already a Green Room member and you want to get around like-minded people and you want to learn from people who've already done it, consider joining the Green Room, greenroomuniversity.com. That's a private membership group that I run alongside with a couple other hustlers and resellers. And that group is up to, I think we're up to over 700, almost 750 uh, members over there. So it's really a great community over there. If you're not ready to join or you're on a budget, get the free book below, 100 Amazing Items to Resell. That book will get you started with selling all types of items from clothing to clothing accessories, ties, belts, electronics, puzzles, video games. There's a million things in there well, only a hundred items, but it feels like a million uh, things that you can buy and sell from garage sales, thrift stores, pawn shop, the list goes on and on to flip on eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, and uh, even more than that. So smash that like button. Looks like we got 111 likes right now. So that's pretty cool. I want to mention something that uh, Alex mentioned. What's up to Alex? He actually used to live in Massachusetts, but I believe he, he lives in Vegas now, I want to say. So hopefully you are doing well. Uh, he mentioned regional rate A, and uh, I'm also going to mention regional rate uh, B boxes. So these are boxes that do have weight limits on it, but if you ship to a certain region, you can save a lot of money. So, you know, there's so many ways to ship items, guys, right? You know, you can ship this item priority, priority flat, regional rate A, regional rate B, bubble mail. There's so many ways. There's FedEx, there's UPS. Um, maybe we'll do a show on that one day where we cover all the various shipping 
methods. But the easiest way is to honestly ship through the eBay uh, system and just experiment with all the different uh, methods to see which one is cheapest for you based on the weight, location, size. There's a ton of factors, but thank you, uh, Alex, for bringing that up. Good to see you, Debbie Keith. Glad to have you here. Virginia Treasure Guy, what's going on? We got VA in the house. So Fantic Life asks, does the listing duration affect the sale of clothes? Like, should I pick a longer duration or a shorter? Uh, typically, when I sell clothes, there's two two main methods that I'll that I'll do. Uh, mostly, I'm going 30 day buy it now with the best offer. That's just what I prefer. Um, or I'll run a seven day auction. Right. Recently, I've been selling a couple items seven day auction just to get them moving because I'm really trying to focus on uh, sales velocity and keeping inventory moving. I used to have a business model which was very long tail. It worked out well. I was doing anywhere between five to eight grand per month selling used clothing for a couple of years, uh, but I worked up a pretty big inventory and I don't have that much space right now. Um, so I'm trying to keep items moving. So auction's a great way to keep your items moving. Moving, I would say seven day. If you, if you do a three day or a 10 day, they're gonna hit you with an extra fee. Um, but really, I'd say overall, the best method is to go buy it now. Uh, best offer or not best offer. I know some people who like it, some who don't. So, uh, But I would say buy it now. 30 days is probably one of the best ways to sell it. So someone was asking, um, should we start with a female mannequin or a male? Can you get a female and then turn it around for men's clothes? Frank, stop being a troll. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He he made a joke in that comment, so I'm just I'm I'm messing around with you. Um, you know, if you turn it around, I don't know if if it doesn't look weird. I have a feeling it's going to look a little odd that way. So I would say just get both. Um, get a dress for me. If 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 you're going to be heavy in men's clothing, but you're going to sell a little bit of women's. Invest the big bucks into uh, you know 75, 80 bucks into the dress for a mannequin for a male, and then spend maybe the 20 bucks or 25 bucks for the hanging mannequin female. So that's probably what I would do. <coughs> so I'm in the comment section right now answering questions. Uh, Arnold Braun, I believe that's your name. Steve, vids are always great. Thank you. Appreciate you watching. Thanks, Dennis Weaver. Appreciate it. Dash, Mr. Dash Sweezy in the house. Do jeans fit on dress form? I've never seen you actually uh, list jeans. So as of late, what I here, let me let me take a step back. What I used to do is I used to have this little wooden, I don't even know what it was called, but I would kind of hang my jeans over it and take pictures that way. Um, another thing you can do is you could um, Get one of those little wall hangers. It's adhesive and you stick it up onto the wall. It's like a little wall hanger. And you get the, um, what are those things called that have the two metal clips? Like if you see it at the thrift store, they'll have the two metal clips, the hangers, and it'll hang the jeans. What I used to do is I used to clip something on the wall, hang the jeans against the, the background and take my pictures that way. Um, or what I've been doing lately is I've just been folding it up nicely on the carpet or um, on the table and uh, just taking pictures that way. I haven't had any problems. So we've sold a couple pairs of True Religion jeans lately going going about that method. So uh, really, I don't think it's a big deal. You could hang it against the wall. You put it on a carpet, a table. Uh, I think either way, you should be fine. Just take a bunch of pictures. Yes, Prof Sales, P-R-O-F Sales. He actually hosted a video on my channel uh, a couple months ago. Great guy. He's got a video uh, where he's been, a whole series where he's talking about selling jeans and whatnot. So super educated. I believe he's a professor as well. So he's a great communicator, a great teacher. Uh, check him out, Prof Sales on YouTube. How do you price an item when doing best offer? how high on price. I like to price it comparable to other items. Now, if I'm going with a more uh, quick flip, you know, uh, fast nickel approach, I'm going to, I'm going to price it based on the lower end. If I'm going more of the slow dime approach where, you know, I don't mind waiting two to three times as long to get that high price, um, then I'll price it higher. But it really depends on your business model. Nobody could answer that question. 
how much money are you willing to risk? How long are you willing to wait? What's your business model? You've got to find out those uh, answers. So I'm just looking through the comment section. Again, guys, I appreciate you all watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button. It's a great way to show that you enjoyed these free videos. If you have any uh, suggestions for future videos, feel free to ask away. So crafty caregiver, his mom shows us oldies can work our butts off. I want to be just like her when I grow up. Yeah, so uh, I actually got my mother into reselling about uh, over two years ago. Now she doesn't sell on eBay. Uh, she sells on Amazon FBA. It's a little easier for her. She mainly focuses on books. Uh, but she's over 60 years of age. So for any of you folks who think, you know, once I hit 60, once I hit 61, it's over. I can't do it. You can do it. And there's countless others. We, uh, we met a couple in Austin, Texas who, um, they're green room members and uh, big shout out to Les and his wife. I don't know how old they are, but, um, they're making it happen, right? They're so vibrant. They're so alive and they're making it happen. So don't think, you know, once you're over 50 or once you're over 60 or once you're over 70, that it's over. I know plenty of people that are making it happen. And, uh, you know, my mother, she's killing it. She's absolutely killing it. I believe she did over, um, hopefully she doesn't mind me telling, but I think she did over $4,000 on Amazon for the month of August. So, uh, she kicked butt. She actually sold a book for $253 and, uh, Super proud of her. She's been doing it. She's been making it happen. And she actually just texted me. I'm sorry. This sound should be off. I apologize for that. But uh, yeah, there's so many opportunities out there. It's ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to leave you guys with these last uh, words of advice. If you want to be successful on eBay, if you want to have a successful clothing business, if you want to make it happen, if you want to rise to the top, you got to work hard. Start waking up early in the morning. Start putting time aside each and every day if you're working a full-time job. The business doesn't care about your excuses. The clothing business doesn't care that you have a family. The clothing business doesn't care that you're busy. The clothing business doesn't care that you're tired. All the clothing business cares about is listing, 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 providing value to the market, and then in turn, the market will buy the item and put money in your bank account. The business doesn't care what your excuses are. You've got to put in time. You've got to put in time. You've got to put in effort. You've got to make time. The more time you put in, the more effort you put forth, the more that you focus on building a business. And the key word is focus. You get what you focus on in life. Have you ever noticed that when you focus on eating better foods, you focus on exercising, you focus on you know, learning about different various brands to buy and sell, you focus on optimizing your listings, you focus on traffic to your listings. You notice what you focus on, you get more of. Focus on the business, focus on it. Watch YouTube videos, right? Watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, join a, a community, join the green room, greenroomuniversity.com. It's a, it's a membership group that I run with a couple other guys. There's another guy in there who's been selling for over three years, super successful, travels all around. He also has a full-time job, makes it happen. We have another guy in there, the Bonafide Hustler, who's been selling for over 12 years, quit his corporate job. He had a six-figure job. He quit. Now he makes a full-time with eBay, with Amazon. He's also one of the admins of the green room. Get around like-minded people. If it's not the green room, get into a free Facebook group or just interact in the comment section. But you've got to get around like-minded people. You've got to focus on what you want. You've got to put effort. The harder you work, the better results you're going to get. Now, of course, being smart, creating systems, finding ways to leverage yourself is also going to play an important role. But at the end of the day, hard work is going to, it's going to create the most results for you. The more you go out thrifting, the more items you buy, the more you list, the more you put out there to the marketplace, the more you're going to sell. At the end of the day, the business doesn't care what excuses you have. If you don't list, if you don't put your items out there, if you don't make it happen, if you don't ship on time, the business isn't going to thrive. So that's a little bit of tough love right there. You know, I'm pretty much giving you the advice that I wish that I had when I first gotten started because I remember when I started, I had so many excuses. If I had a penny for every excuse I've had, I'd be rich. But anyways, guys, uh, go make it happen. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you've not already had a chance to like the video, do it right now. Take your finger, put it on the mouse. Scroll it down and smash that like button. Um, leave a comment. Let me know what you guys thought of this video.
What's happening, everybody on YouTube? Steve here, Rake and Profit, coming to you guys from my eBay photography setup right now. It's a little different than it typically is because I need to make sure I get enough light for you guys to see me. So I actually have one of my umbrella lights directly behind you guys. So uh, yeah, photography setup's a little different. Typically, I'd have this light. I'd have two of them going directly at the item. So since I'm kind of running low on light, I've got this one on and I've got this one and I've got some uh, daylight, natural daylight coming in through the window. Uh, this is pretty much a big no-no when it comes to taking pictures because you want to make sure that you have the same type of lights. You know, these are, you know, a white daylight bulb. This is like something completely different. This light's a little different. So I don't know how wacky it's going to look. Um, but again, you know, a lot of people, they get worked up in perfection. You know, my picture's got to look the greatest. It's got to be, you know, 99 out of 100, A+. Plus. I mean, to be honest, guys, most pictures on eBay are like a C, C-. minus. So if it could even be a B or a B+, plus, you're going to be, you know, well ahead of the game. So welcome, everybody. I'm just going to be listing. Um, I'm actually not going to be listing. Let me, let me take that back. I'm going to be taking pictures. So I'm going to be taking pictures of the items that I have. Got a uh, Woolrich here. Got a Ryan Spooner. Five brother item. Uh, what do I have right here that I'm going to be listing? This is a pair of Ex Officio outdoor pants. Um, I've got a Lacoste shirt and I've got a suit. So I don't know how far I'm going to get through. I've got some things going on today. So I might only be able to go live for about 30 to 45 minutes, but we'll see what happens. We'll have some fun. Uh, it's not going to be a lot of talking in this video, right? It's going to be me just working, taking pictures, but I'll be sure to check in, you know, every couple minutes five ten minutes and uh, see what's in the comment section so let's shout some people out real quick who do we have in the house we got David Carnickle saying hey Rakin today was the first day I went out picking spent a hundred five dollars wondering if I can show you what I got uh, I haven't been a week since I learned about arbitrage business so feel free David to leave a comment um, you know, on this on this video, and I'll do the best I can to answer your question. You know, there's a lot of people who want to reach out and, and talk on the phone and have one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I'm I'm not offering any coaching right now. I'm I'm not really giving out my number and stuff like that. I try to answer as much questions as I can during these shows to leverage myself as much as possible. Because to be honest with you guys, I have so many things going on. I, I, I'm, my time is very very valuable. So uh, I'll do the best I can to help you guys out on the show. All right, so a little more housekeeping. I'm going to be listening closed on eBay, and hopefully you guys can hear me okay because this is going directly through the Logitech microphone. Clothes I'm going to list, going to be listing through my iPhone 6S Plus. I've got the lights, um, got a clean background, got a dress for a mannequin right here. Dress for a mannequin, about 100 bucks on eBay or Amazon. Lights are a little whacked out, but we're going to do the best we can. So I'm going to open up my eBay app right now. And maybe afterwards as well, maybe I'll share what I found in this bag. Does anybody, can anybody tell what this is? I don't know how clear the picture is coming in, but. Uh, and maybe after I'll show you what else is in these bags as well. I almost tipped over. So we'll see what happens with this show. Just having a little bit of fun, taking you guys behind the scenes a little bit. So my app is open. Okay. All right, cool. So let's get started. Again, I'm not going to be listing. I'm going to be more or less taking pictures and then saving it as a draft and completing it afterwards just because I don't want to waste your time measuring items and doing some of the more boring things so anyways uh here's a nice Woolrich item that i am getting ready to list i know it's probably very hard to see with the light this is really cool this is uh it's got a tweed material you've got the leather elbow patches on the back um very nice I've had this for a while I, ha I haven't gotten to list it uh size large wool just a nice item so uh yeah let's uh let's take some pictures of this let me get my window all set up properly. Okay. And uh, I want to thank everyone for coming live. If you are watching live, smash the like button. If you're watching the replay later on, 
give that like button a little tap. Show some love. All right, cool. Let's get into it, guys. Enough chitter chatter. So the first picture I always like to take is of the tag, the actual tag of the uh, item. So let me, first thing I'm going to have to do is look up this item. Since I'm going through my phone, I'm going to look it up as Woolrich. It's kind of like a, like a Pico, I guess you would call it. A Woolrich uh, wool Peacoat tweed. So essentially what I'm trying to do is find an item that has already sold on eBay that's similar to this item. Um, and what I'm going to do is sell similar. So I'm going to pretty much copy their listing in a sense. Um, and then I'm going to switch up some of the items. But I have to find one first that somewhat resembles it. Let's see. All right, found one. Okay, cool. So I'm going to open that up. And I'm going to just, I'm not going to do the title in full. This is a, I'm just going to do a little bit of the title. Woolrich. Peacoat. All right, cool. So now I'm going to start taking some pictures, guys. And hopefully you can hear me all right. Let me know how the sound is. Again, I'm working off of a uh, webcam. Sometimes you got to pull your light over a little bit to get some get some better light. There we go. All right. nice item I really like that so let's get into picture mode Take as many pictures as you possibly can. Pictures are very important. Pictures worth a thousand words. I love these elbow patches. They're beautiful. Oh, this is going to be a nice picture. It's got to tilt it over a little bit. Looks like it's tilting. All right, so those are the pictures, guys. I'm gonna see if you can if you can see on the camera how they look. So uh, let me see if I could show these to you. So on the app, you could actually twist things around and whatnot, which is pretty cool. So here's that picture. Uh, I would probably add a little more light to it just to make it look a little better. Uh, you could also crop it, which is pretty cool. This functionality right here allows you to crop the item. So crop. I mean, it's a clean picture. I like it a lot. Is it the best? No, but I, I, I think it's respectable. 
that's, that's another one. Uh, let me get out of there. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the pictures are looking pretty clean. I like it. So, all right, I'm going to save that as a draft now, and I'm going to move on to the next item. Okay. So if you look down here, you can actually see save. Cool. Uh, what the heck did I just do? Let me make sure I... Uh, okay, cool. Yeah. So if you if you see right here, under drafts, right here, Peacoat, and then it should come back up again. So my internet's a little slow right now since I'm running the live show, but yep, yeah, it's saved. So cool. There we go. All right. What's up, Axel Rosa? Good to see you. Shannon, hello, hello. Got a lot of people saying smash the like button. That's what I like to hear. What's up, OZ Worldwide? What's up, Cody? What's up, mate? All right, let's move on to another item to picture. This is a sweet item right here. Uh, this is actually a garage sale find. Check this out. Rain Spooter, Rhine Spooter. I don't know how to pronounce it, guys. I've heard people pronounce it like a thousand times. I'm just lacking in that department. Uh, but yeah, nice item right here. I like it. Nice Hawaiian shirt. This is an excellent brand when uh, messing with Hawaiian shirts. Jason T. Smith, I know you love this brand. If you find anything that's themed, like it's got a unique theme to it, it does really, really well. I think this will do really nice. Um, I see, I think I see even like some tiki mugs on here and stuff. Oh, there's tiki mugs. I don't know. Pina coladas. I mean, that's a nice item for a buck. I want you guys to guess right now, what should I list this item for? This is a, uh, I'm going to call it a Ryan Spooner. Is it Ryan or Rain? Rain Spooner? I don't know. I should know these things. Uh, extra large. Um, just regular buttons. They don't look wooden. What, what would you guys sell this for? 100% rayon, extra large. Nice item. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'm going to get this puppy listed. Well, pictured. <clears throat> All right. Very nice. Twelve fifty, Bobby. Come on now, Bobby. Don't shortchange yourself. Fourteen ninety nine, guys. Come on now. See, twenty four ninety nine. I'm liking that price a little more. I'm liking that price a little bit more. So I'm gonna look this up. Uh, <coughs> trying to find something distinct on it. What does it say? Sam Samgan. Something cutter, uh, cutter. Oh no! So you know, if I go to the sold listings, I'm gonna see people selling it for twelve and fifteen for different ones. I already know it. Um, but you know, you take a look right here. Let me show you what's going on. Um, you know, here's one for fifty-three. I mean, that's a beautiful one. Then here's one for nine, sixteen, thirteen, thirteen, twenty. 24, 19, 16, 19, um, you know, they're all over the place. But if I was to sort it from highest to lowest, you better believe there's going to be some that are coming in at like 100 plus. I can only imagine. All right. So I'm going to do sell one like this. And I'm going to start taking some pictures. Oh, forgot to take the Woolrich off the mannequin. I love the dress for mannequins. They are great. Whoa. You know what? It seems like my mannequin is starting to tip a little bit. I don't like that. What's going on? Is it because it's too high up? I don't know. It's funny. Anyways. Got to button this, button this guy up. 
This looks really weird. <laughs> oh gosh. All right, cool. So there it is. A dollar from a garage sale, guys. Come on. This is this is amazing. Amazing find for a buck. Am I gonna get rich off of this? No. But uh, I'll make a few bucks, pay for some gas money. The lighting is really bad right now. I'll tell you that right now. The lighting is not good at all. But I'm going to have to do some post-production editing. The lighting would be a lot better if the light, there's a light literally right behind you guys. At my second one of these. Um, it's the only way you'd be able to see me. But I'll show you guys the, the pictures in a few minutes. Let me know what you think. I mean, it's not rocket science, guys. You know, just, just taking some pictures. I always like to take a side picture as well. I don't know. I just think it differentiates myself from other sellers. Yeah, this, this thing is so tilted. Why is this tilted? Weird. That's not good. It's not good at all. I'm going to have to re-tilt it the other way. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. So let's take a look at the pictures. <laughs> Shannon says, question, if you do this every item, how do you keep store full of products to sell? I'm not sure what you mean by that question, Shannon, but you know, you got to continue to add products. You, you know, there's, at a certain time, you're going to realize, all right, you know, based on my business model, how I'm pricing, the types of items that I'm selling, Shannon, you're going to realize maybe you're, maybe every month you sell 40 items, right? Well, you know, if you want to continue to grow your business, you're going to have to have to list more than you sell. So you might have to get in the routine of listing 50 items a month or a hundred items a month. You've got to always be listing more and more. So I'm not hundred percent sure what you mean by that question. But if you want to keep your store full, you've got to consistently be listing and going out sourcing. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you don't want to run out of stuff, you've got to consistently go out. You know, I do eBay very part time. I run an Amazon business. I have a full time YouTube channel. I run a membership site. I've got a few other things that I do as well on the side that, that people don't really know much about. So I'm a really busy dude. Um, but, you know, the cool thing about eBay is you can do it part time if you want five hours a week. You can do it um full time you know 40 50 hours a week it's up to you so you're gonna have to realize you know how many items am i selling or how many items do i want to sell you know in order to hit my goal and i don't know what your goal is shannon maybe it's 100 bucks a month or 500 bucks a month i know a lot of people out there who would kill to have an extra 500 bucks a month and that might not necessarily be your profit that's a whole other story determining you know what's your profit margin and all that but if you want to keep your store full the first step is you know buying You've got to buy enough uh, and even before that prerequisite to buying enough is determining what you need to buy so that's why these YouTube videos are so valuable that's why I've created books like 101 killer clothing brands 102 killer clothing brands these are guides I've made for beginners people who don't know what to buy and sell you know I didn't know about Woolrich I didn't know about Ryan Spooner I didn't know about Burton Lacoste five brothers but you know I have to figure it out and learn how to do it so uh, if you want to learn about those brands, go in the description of this video under my product section, and uh, that'll be the best way to figure out what to buy. <clears throat> What's up, Chicago Crown Hustler? All right, I'm going to keep moving. So where am I in this process? Uh, oh, yeah, I took pictures. So let me show you guys. It's kind of hard to tell if you can see me or not. So uh, here we go. These are the pictures that I took. So I'm in the app right now, so, you know, you could uh, crop out the picture a little. You could add some light, you know, make it look a little brighter if you'd like. Done. These are the pictures I took. Okay, cool. So, got a bunch of pictures. Gonna save this as a draft, and again, afterwards, after I get off this video or 
maybe tonight or tomorrow. I'm not sure. I'll probably just take pictures today. I really like to batch my work. Uh, I'll go in, I'll get my ruler. I'll go back to all these items. I'll measure them out. So like for this, I'll get the, the chest and the length measurement for the P code. I'll get the length chest, probably even a shoulders measurement with the sleeves. Um, I'll measure it, create the titles, create the description, format my price. Um, do all that stuff and then finalize the listing. But I didn't want to waste your time doing all that on this video. I've done it before and it turns into like a long winded video. So I wouldn't say I'm necessarily raking in the profits with eBay. Uh, you know, I do it part time. You know, my, my, my 60 day numbers is uh, about $7,000 for eBay over the last 60 days, but that's really overinflated um, because I had a camera that I sold for 2000. So really, you know, I, my goal is just to do like a thousand or two thousand dollars every month on eBay. And you might be thinking, Steve, come on now, man, that's it. Or you might be thinking, wow, that's awesome. Um, I do it very part time. Again, I'm a busy dude. Um, but there was a time where I was going full time eBay. And if I wanted to, like if my back was against the wall, let me play out a scenario. Let's just say my YouTube channel got taken down. I got kicked out of the green room. I wasn't an admin running that membership site. I got kicked off Amazon FBA. Um, and I had no way to make money. Craigslist wouldn't let me sell. Um, the different businesses, my publishing business, I couldn't, I couldn't make money with CreateSpace, ACX, I couldn't do affiliate marketing, I couldn't run websites, all the things I do, and I had to do eBay, I guarantee you I can get to $10,000 a month within, within probably three months if I went balls to the walls, 50, 60, 70 hours a week. Um, but you, know, you have to realize what are your goals, what's your situation, maybe you're a wife, and you have three kids and a husband and a full-time job. I mean, eBay is not going to be the thing for you to go full-time. So that's the beautiful thing about eBay. You know, you do what you do, you know, you put in the effort that you'd, you know, like to get back out. So yeah, you know, Sh Shannon's saying 2K a month would be awesome. $2,000 is a lot of money, guys. $2,000 is a lot. $2,000 can change your life. Now, Shannon, remember, if you do 2,000 in sales, you're selling clothing and stuff, you know, after shipping and fees and uh, your cost of goods and taxes, you know, you might only be bringing home a dollar for every $2 you sell, maybe less, maybe more. It depends on your business model, depends on uh, the eye that you've acquired in terms of, you know, finding items that are super profitable. <coughs> but, uh, you know, $2,000, even an extra 500 to $1,000 can change a lot of people's lives. I have a lot of friends. I got a lot of colleagues. I know a lot of people who, you know, they only make a thousand, two thousand dollars a month, right? Some young kids, some some young guys and whatnot. They make a thousand bucks a month. They're going to college. I mean, an extra five hundred bucks could change their life, and I'm sure it could change your life as well. All right, let's uh, let's go on to the next item. So I usually take. If you're wondering how many pictures should you take um, on eBay, I mean depends six to 12 if you get closer to that 12 the better but sometimes it's hard to take that many pictures <coughs> so right now I've got a pair of ex officio outdoor pants um, in terms of how to take pictures of pants there's a few different options um, I got to cut off something really quick. Let me grab a knife. There's a, there's a tag on this, uh, on this pair of pants. All right. Um, there's a few different ways to take pictures of pants. Number one, you can put like a little hanger on your wall and have one of those pants. Um, like at the thrift store, you know, they all have all the jeans kind of hung up on those little, on those little things. You can hang it like that and take a picture. I don't have that set up here. Um, another way you can take pictures is on the carpet. Just make sure it's clean. Uh, or what I'm going to do with this, since it's kind of a lighter color and I've got a dark uh, kitchen table, I'm actually going to, I'm going to take it on that table because it's really going to help the item to pop out. So bear with me for one moment. I'm going to move some stuff around and get this table ready to take a picture of this item so let's see what we can do let's uh let's bring this down a little bit there we go cool cool 
So there we go. Nice pants, ex officio. Pretty cool. I think I paid, I don't know, $3 or something from a Salvation Army. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first look this item up on eBay so I can find a listing to mimic. So X officio outdoor pants. What what uh, material are these? These are 100% nylon. So I'm gonna type in nylon as well. All right. So I already see some that have sold. So I actually see a pair that sold for 25, uh, 24, 22. Okay. Cool. All right, so I found a listing that I want to mimic. And there's a few different ways you can go about taking pictures of pants. Um, I'm going to just start off by kind of opening this up a little bit like that and taking a picture, excuse me, of it like this. Now, it's not going to be the best presentation, but, you know, guys, I mean, it just has to look good. You know, if it looks good, if it looks clean, uh, you're going to be okay. The next one's going to be a picture like this. It's going to be like the, the, the half cut off right here. And I'm going to show you guys the picture in a minute. Uh, next, I'm going to get an up close picture of this, this snapping belt. Now I'm going to flip it around just like that. And I also, I already inspected these when I purchased them and before I did this video. Uh, at this point, you probably also want to do an inspection as well. Make sure there's no stains, there's rip, no rips, no tears. Um, you're going to want to look down at the bottom of the pants, make sure there's no rips down here, which is a common flaw. Uh, but this is a nice pair of ex officio outdoor uh, hiking pants. So there we go. Let's get an up-close picture of the tag. Looking good. Now, what I always like to do is I like to take a picture of the bottom of the hem of the pants right here, just to show that they haven't been dragged on the ground, that they're, that, that they're not all ripped up. So I'm going to move this around a little bit, get some more light in here. Okay. This is just, you know, a nice little touch. Okay. Now, at this point, if you wanted to, if you wanted to only work on the table, what a lot of people do for their main picture is they'll fold the item over like this, and they'll kind of do like a little, like a little twist, right? Uh, just so you can see the whole entire item in the picture. And I'm gonna try to do that. I don't know how nice it's gonna look, but let's give it a shot. Uh, let's see how that comes out. You know, I don't know how that, that's going to be okay. That's a pretty lousy picture, but eh. It doesn't look so good. So what I would probably do is I would probably lay this out on the carpet. That would be a good way to depict the whole entire item. Problem is, it's the same color as the carpet, so it's not going to come out looking super clean. But this is a good way to get your main picture. So you can lay it out like that. <laughs> yeah, that picture doesn't look that clean, but it, I think it'll be okay. Let me show you guys what it looks like. I'm going to crop this. Uh, the pants are a little wrinkly, but I just, you know, it's an outdoor item. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Uh, let me... Okay, so I'm going to show you what that picture looked like. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it looks a little wrinkly. I'm not loving it, but I think it'll do the job. I don't think it's, I don't think it's that big of a deal. So I think, I think that'll be okay. i uh, just going to go through, edit out the rest of the pictures. Okay. 
And then I'm going to save that as a draft. Let's see what we got for questions in the house. What percentage of your profit do you refund back? So what percentage do you put back into the business? Um, you know, for me, I've got savings, I've got money. So I pretty much, you know, if I have an opportunity, I buy the item. So I can't give you that number in terms of what percentage I put back. If there's an opportunity, I buy the item. Um, but if you're just getting started, I mean, I would put pretty much 100% back into the business um, and build that business up on the side until the point where you can start taking, you know, taking an income from the business because you're going to deal with some cash flow issues in the beginning, right? You're going to be, you know, technically making a thousand dollar profit, but the problem you're going to have is in order to keep the business growing and to keep the sales coming through, you're going to have to invest in more product, uh, product to build up your store and you're going to have to buy supplies and equipment, a mannequin, lighting, all these different things eventually. So the cash flow is going to be an issue at first. You may be technically making a profit, but you're not going to be able to take any income because you're going to have to keep rolling it over. So, you know, I would, I would just keep investing the money back in at first. Chicago says, Raken, I'm one sale away from reaching top rated seller. Thanks for the awesome info uh, and input for your viewers. Definitely helped me along the way. Awesome, Chicago Crown Hustler. Good luck with that. That's phenomenal. Raken, would you start with retail arbitrage or private label if you were starting with $2,000 capital? I'd probably start with neither. I'd probably go with thrift stores and garage sales. Uh, that's the route that I would take. Um, but if I had to choose between, you know, arbitrage and uh, re um, private label, I would I would pick uh, retail arbitrage. Uh, if if the two thousand dollars was all I had, because I know that I could flip that item, those flight, I could flip those items quick and make a profit, and eventually become profitable much quicker than private label. People don't realize that private label. Uh, is a lot more work and a lot more challenging than than most people think. You know, you watch all these people who show these videos of I'm making all this money with private label, but what they don't, what they fail to mention is typically six to twelve months later, their their um, their uh, product gets completely wiped out because the Chinese either come in or the competition comes in, and then there's a price war. Two, they fail to mention what their actual profit is because. Uh, there's actually a lot of overhead and there's a lot of money that goes into actually getting the product to rank initially, which, you know, comes into buying reviews, paying for paid advertisements, um, PPC, so many different things. So private label isn't what most people think. Um, I actually went into it and I don't have a ton of experience, so I don't really want to touch on the matter too much, but private label Private label isn't what most people think. That's all I'm going to say. It's not as easy as, as you think it is, and it's a lot of work, and it's a lot more of a real business than thrifting and hitting garage sales and doing eBay and Amazon. eBay and Amazon, they're doing pretty much all the work for you. They're marketing. They're driving traffic. They're getting your items ranked. P customers come. They buy your item. Private label, you're wearing all the hats. So that's my two cents. Josh Fisher, what's happening, man? Thank you. How do you determine your asking price for your items? Uh, I go through the sold listings. So I go through the sold listings and I find comparable sales. So for example, um, these ex officio pants, I'll find, I'll try to find some that have sold the exact ones. You know, maybe it's a different size, but same color, you know, same material, same style. Say I see one sell for 25, another sell for 28. One sell for 22, one sell for 20, one sell for 30. Um, I'll price according to that. Now I have more of a long tail um, approach. What what and what that means is I'll typically price it a little higher to move it. Um, let me rephrase that. I'll price it a little higher, and I'd be willing to wait to move it at a higher price down the line. Uh, but as of late, I've actually been switching business models a little more towards the quicker flip. So you know, if the high was 30 and the low was 20, I'd probably come in somewhere around 24, 25, somewhere in the middle. You know, a reasonable uh, sales velocity right there at, at that price approach and um, yeah, turn your inventory. So it's all about comparable sales for me. <coughs> yeah, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask away. Having a lot of fun hanging out with you guys. You guys are freaking awesome. 
I'm actually uh, probably going to make some more videos today. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but um, I posted over a thousand videos on my channel. I think I'm like a thousand and five videos now. So I'm thinking about making a video that's like, you know, nine things I learned from my first thousand videos on YouTube or something like that. So uh, that might be a lot of fun. Um, also, speaking of YouTube, I don't know if any of you guys are interested in becoming a content creator, making a YouTube channel. If you're in the Green Room, which is the membership site that I run, greenroomuniversity.com. It's a site where we, you know, we focus on teaching beginners and intermediates about eBay, Amazon, reselling, entrepreneurship, a uh, whole, it encompasses a whole bunch of different things. But um, over there, we're actually doing a uh, content creators course. So we did part one already. We have three more parts to it. Uh, which is really cool walking people through the whole entire process of starting a YouTube channel. And you might think, you know, why start a YouTube channel? First of all, you can make a, a really good, you know, impact on the world with a YouTube channel. You've got a wide spread of influence. You can help people. Also, you can make really good money. And it's great to network and meet people to get like insider information about starting a business, whether it's private label or eBay. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, Chicago Crown Hustler saying finding some interesting things in the Halloween section at thrift stores. Uh, what are the items you should be looking for? I don't necessarily know. I've never really uh, dove into that whole Halloween trying to find items over there in that section during that that time frame. But I know Jason T. Smith uh, was talking about it recently. So go follow him. Um, the thrifting board. He's got some good information over there. It's a Facebook group. I know he talks a lot about that. Shannon, that's awesome. Yeah, just go to greenroomuniversity.com and uh, you can read about what we offer over there and everything like that um, and see if it's a fit for you. <clears throat> Do you use a certain tax software you can recommend for Amazon? Um, so I'm actually going through a lot of changes right now in terms of my bookkeeping and, and tax software and, and stuff like that. Um, I'm actually, I just hired a an outside consulting firm, which they're, they're CPAs slash bookkeepers. So I'm actually going to be moving all my um, tracking of Amazon cost of goods, supplies, equipment, expenses, all that stuff, income. We're going to be using QuickBooks. Uh, what a lot of sellers use is they use um, GoDaddy bookkeeping. That's what I used to use. Uh, but I'm pretty much revamping my whole entire back end administration portion of my business um, because with so many things going on now, I, I really want to outsource that. And this company that I hired, they they pretty much uh, specialize in being in being that outsourced um, option. They they pretty much handle everything from like for example, one. Um, let me give you guys a, give you guys a few tips. If you're gonna be running a business, whether it's an eBay business, an Amazon business, or any business of that nature, aside from incorporating and maybe having an LLC, some important things to remember are one. You want to make sure that whenever you buy something, whether it's a you know a bunch of games to sell on eBay or Amazon or clothes or boxes or tape or anything that's for your business, you want to have a card, a credit card that's only for your business expenses. So then instead of if you lose a receipt or if you have to track information down or you're trying to figure out how much money did I spend, what are my expenses, it's all on that one credit card. A big mistake I made in the past is what I would do is I would have a credit card and I would, you know, I would buy food for myself on that. I would buy boxes. I would buy tape. I would take my girlfriend out. I'd buy a laptop for myself. I, I, I was mixing business and personal and that makes it a freaking headache. So uh, one tip, make sure that you have your, and again, I'm not a CPA or a lawyer or anything. So this is just my experience. It's not legal advice, um, but have a credit card separated off. So you, you just know what's going on there. Have a personal credit card for yourself have a uh, business credit card for yourself. I like to use credit cards because it makes it really easy to track items. Also, when you buy stuff, save all your receipts and then once every week or every month, um, separate it all out. There's also a service called shoeboxed.com which you can send all your receipts to them and then they organize it. I think I'm gonna uh, maybe do a review on that and try that service out myself, but I've heard really good things about it. Um, also, make sure that you have your bank account split off as well. You want all your business income coming into one account and all your personal stuff being in another account. Don't be paying your electric bill and um, don't be uh, paying like personal bills and mixing it with business bills. Just separate it all off. So 
hopefully that helped. You recommend a healthy drink about a month ago. You were drinking it and said it's uh, it's good and healthy. It started with a C. Um, started with a C. I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to think about that. Vitamin C. <laughs> uh, let's see. Wheatgrass shots are really good. Do you have a lot of returns from customers? Uh, my return rate has been a little funky lately, uh, but typically it's around two to three percent, if not less than that. Uh, mine's been a little higher because I've sold a few electronics that um, got returned and just random issues that that I've been dealing with. I, I got a few negatives recently. Uh, one of them, my my own mistake. Another one, not really my mistake. But anyways, sorry about that. Just got a text. Um, oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. Uh, kombucha. It actually starts with a K. K O M B. I forget. Kombucha. It's a uh, it's a really good drink. Helps with digestion. It's a probiotic. Uh, they have them pretty much at all grocery stores. Do you make more money with uh, eBay or Amazon? Uh, definitely Amazon. But again, it really depends on how much time you put in it. Um, but my income's kind of split between eBay and Amazon. You know, a couple months ago, I made more money with eBay. Uh, last month, I made way more money with Amazon. And then this month, uh, what did I do on Amazon? On Amazon, I did. My numbers dropped significantly on Amazon because I wasn't putting a ton of effort into it. The month before on Amazon was like 13,000 and then this month was I think like 8,000 or something like that and eBay was like a couple thousand. eBay dropped off like crazy this month. But for me, I have multiple income streams. I have like 10 different income streams. So uh, some months like this income stream will be up here and then you know one will be down here and then like the next month. Like I get bored easily so I'm always cycling between my income streams in terms of like how much effort I put into each one. Um, now I know maybe you can't relate to that, but I'm sure some entrepreneurs out there, people with multiple income streams know what I'm talking about where some, some months you put a ton of effort into something, other months you just don't have the energy for it. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but it, you get what you put into it. So. so yeah, we got 71 people watching live right now. Smash the like button guys, show some love. We're gonna get back into the show and then start listing some more items. Uh, 41 likes. Let's get up to 70 likes right now, guys. Smash that like button. Show some love. I want to share with you guys a, uh, a cool item right here. Or you know what? I, I want to take a. Uh, I want to take a uh, poll. Shall I list this item up right now and talk about this and what it is, or should I show you what's in the bag? So I want you to leave a comment right now. If you want option one, say list the shirt. If you want option two, I want you to type in the comment section, show me what's inside the bag. List the shirt or show me what's inside the bag. I'm going to put this down for a second. Make sure to smash the like button. But what do you want to know about the shirt? Do you want to know what's in the bag? So I'm looking at the comment section right now. Let's see what folks have to say. We got 60 likes. Woo! Appreciate the love right there, guys. Oh man, Chicago Crown Hustlers, like, what you got in the bag? Man, everybody wants to know what's in the bag. What's up, Barbara? Good to see you, Circuit Lurker. Lurking around, Firebird. Circuit Lurker's like, man, I want the shirt. All right, guys, so Lurker, I apologize, but people want to know what's in the bag. Now, this isn't an amazing uh, score or anything like that. So I don't want you guys to think I'm getting ready to show you the craziest thing that you've ever seen. Uh, let me move this up a little bit. <coughs> um, but today I went to went to the Salvation Army. Wasn't planning on going sourcing, but went to Starbucks this morning, did a little work, um, booked a hotel for a couple nights in um, – Mid-October, my mother and I were going on a, a thrifting trip as well. It's going to be the outskirts of Connecticut, nothing special. Um, but we booked a hotel for a few nights, so I'll be sure to vlog that as well. But after Starbucks, we decided to go over to Salvation Army to see what we can find over there. And uh, was actually getting ready to walk out the store. And I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. And then all of a sudden, I saw this. Let me show you a picture. This will this will add some more context to more context to the, uh, where is it? 
Okay, here we go. So I was I was in the Salvation Army, and then this is what I saw. I don't know if you guys can see this or not. That's a counter. It's the counter at the Salvation Army, and I saw a bag sitting there with N64 games in it. So I actually put a post in the green room saying, let the suspense begin. What's in the bag? Because I didn't know what was in the bag. Uh, okay, cool. So this made me nervous. It made me pretty nervous at first. Uh, I said to the woman, I said, uh, who I'm friends with, which is really important, build relationships with the people at the thrift stores, pawn shops, all those places. I said, how much How much for everything in the bag? And she goes, well, this actually just got donated. Um, it's not even priced yet. So I said, oh, okay. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, shh. Oh, shh. They're going to freaking say we can't sell it because they haven't priced the items. I'm sure you guys have had that situation before where – you go to buy an item and they're like, we can't sell it to you. We haven't priced it yet. It has to go in the back room. And it's like, oh man, you got a customer right here. But anyway, she goes, well, there's about five games and there's actually more because she didn't look in the boxes. She goes, uh, no, there were six games. She goes, oh, well, a dollar each will be six. How about $4.99? And I just said, yes. I actually looked in the bag real quick and I saw a couple items that were decent. I said, all right, fine, let's do it. So uh, this is what I found for $4.99. Um, tell, me, tell me what you guys think. Would you buy this for $4.99? Um, this game I found is uh, uh, w, WWF Warzone. Comes with the box. So it comes with the box. It's always cool if you find a game with a box. Uh, I didn't look this up, but I'm guessing it's probably worth like five bucks, not much. So that was the first game. Also found another one, The Revenge. Uh, this is worth like nothing. I'll probably just bundle up the games that aren't worth much together and sell for like five or ten bucks. Um, there's that. That's not special. Um, but then there was a couple interesting games. This isn't. This is NBA. This is just. It's not worth anything. Um, there were a couple interesting games. First of all, uh, Ready to Rumble Boxing. I don't even know if this is worth anything. I'm gonna look it up right now on Amazon. Um, actually, I'm going to look it up on eBay because it comes with the box. I'm, I'm guessing it's probably worth, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. It's, it's really nothing special. Let me look it up. Uh, ready, ready to rumble two and 64 with the box. So I'm guessing it's going to be worth like 10 bucks, but let's, let's see, maybe I'm wrong. Sold condition used, um, Okay, so I don't see any with the box. I do see this game, just a game only, selling for like five to ten bucks. So maybe like fifteen bucks for this. So I'll make a couple bucks on that. Let's just say I make like five bucks on this, lotting it together. That'll just pay for what I paid for it. So now let's just say this is all profit. Let's just say I can make I don't know five or ten bucks profit on that. Uh, next game up was uh, Superman. You guys probably can't see Superman. Uh, that's going for like, I don't know, five or 10 bucks, nothing special, but these two games were pretty interesting. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, Killer Instinct and, uh, Mischief Makers in 64. Killer Instinct, Gold and Mischief Makers. Uh, let me know if you're a video game aficionado, what do you think? Uh, based on my research, I'd say these are probably each going for somewhere around like 15 to 20 bucks each. This might be going for a little bit more on FBA, but probably 15 to 20 if I had to guess. So, uh, yeah, boom, got those. Nothing, you guys, it's not, it's not, it's really nothing to brag about. Um, but hey, for five bucks, you know, why not? Okay, let's see. <laughs> Beatles fan says, I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. What's, what's for lunch? Um, anyways. All right, guys, I have a question for you. Shall we continue with the listing, or do you want to get into a clothing haul instead? You want me to show you what's in the bags. So type in the comment section right now, keep listing or keep, yeah, type in keep listing or clothing haul. I'm going to check the comment section in a minute from now. What do you guys want me to do? Keep taking pictures, or do you want to see a little mini clothing haul? This is the cool thing about these live shows. You never know what direction it's going to go in. So I'm screwing around, guys. It's Saturday. I wasn't even planning on doing much work today, but I said, you know what? Let's do a live show. Let's bang. Let's let's kill two. Let's kill two birds with one stone. Let's make a YouTube video and grow my business. So 
Uh, real quick, while you guys are answering that, thrift haul or continue listing, uh, I'll look in the comments in the section. Real quick, I'm going to share with you what this is. This is $4.99. The brand is Five Brothers. I can never pronounce the material. Is it C H A M O I S? Camos? I don't know. Anyways, uh, $4.99. This is a three extra large. Um, I was just going to say Big Brother. Five Brother. Uh, nice, thick cotton shirt right here. Cool thing is, it is new with tags. Uh, brand new and tagged. So I'm guessing probably somewhere between, I don't know, 20 to 30 bucks on this thing. Paid $4.99. So that's a cool little find right there. Five Brother is one of those brands that, you know, it depends what you have. You know, sometimes it can do really, really well. Uh, other times, eh, not so well. So uh, let me know. I'm going to check the comments. Thrift haul or keep listing. Let me know. <laughs> Pittsburgh Mike says Superman 64 is the worst game of all time. Keep listing. Can you talk about a couple of your other income streams? Well, what do you want to know? I make uh, I make some decent money, a couple thousand dollars a month from my Kindle publishing business. So uh, I've got a couple hundred bucks on bucks, hundred couple hundred books that I've outsourced over the years uh, in all different types of niches. Uh, I haven't even written the books. Um, I just found experts in that niche or people who are pretty good writers to write the books and the health, spiritual, uh, business, encompasses a whole bunch of different uh, categories and stuff like that. Um, but I've got a couple hundred books I've outsourced that I earn money on each and every month from the, the KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing Program. Also, I've got those books, some of those books that are, uh, they've been turned into uh, hard book, hard book, uh, hardcover. And, and, and paperback books through CreateSpace program. So I make money through the Kindle publishing program every month, um, CreateSpace, and also some of those books, about 50 of them, I've turned into audiobooks. So I make money through ACX as well. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, a lot has changed. I don't really put much time into my, my publishing business anymore. Uh, it's slowly been kind of dying out over time because I don't put much effort into it. I'm not marketing, I'm not promoting. Uh, most of my effort right now is, is focused on the green room and build, building out our membership site and YouTube and um, obviously eBay and Amazon. But uh, yeah, that's a little bit about one of my other income streams right there. Hey, Shannon, no problem. Uh, definitely talk to you some more. Thanks for watching. I want to be a businessman like you. It's all about starting off, you know, start off with, you know, um, one income stream and, and slowly move into others. You know, now a lot of my income streams do stem off of, of YouTube. Um, YouTube's a great way to, to build a business. You can build a, a business around YouTube by helping people and make a difference. And, you know, I'm at the point now where I really like getting in front of the camera. I like helping, I love sharing and, you know, I enjoy interviewing and, and, and connecting with other people. So, you know, if you want to build a business, YouTube's a great way to build a business. And not only within the reselling community, right? Because to be honest, um, I've noticed resellers, if you're trying to build a business, uh, it's it's a challenge to get resellers to, to give you money. It really is. Um, so if you're looking to start a, a business off of YouTube, I would probably advise not to build it within the reselling niche. Um, but yeah, YouTube's a great tool for sure. What wattage of your lights? Um, these are these are by Top Lighting, 120 volts, 85 watts. 120 volts, 85 watts. So uh, it looks like people wanted the uh, the thrift haul. So you know what? I think I'm going to abandon the rest of this listing. Um, I'm not going to list any more guys and take pictures anymore. I think I'm going to just show you guys some of the items that. Um, I'm going to be listing on eBay over the next month or so. So, yeah, I'll just share with you guys some cool stuff. All right. So I don't have a ton of stuff to show you guys, so I apologize. But, yeah, I'll show you guys some cool stuff. Um, oh, this was really cool. So I picked up a bunch of these. These are really nice. These are uh, button front shirts, Oxford collar, long sleeve. Uh, Standard cuffs, some are striped, some are solid, uh, extra large, actually two extra larges. Uh, Oxford clothes. Let me let me get the camera situated a little bit. 
Cool clothing brand. Uh, if Ronnie Hart's in the house, I don't know if you've ever found a button front shirt that is uh, Oxford clothes, but uh, I love this brand. Typically, I find this brand when it comes to uh, sport coats and suits. I'm trying to think of any other items that I found within that brand. I don't remember, but uh, this is the first time I've ever found Oxford clothes uh, as button front shirts. I found three of them, so I'm not sure if I'm going to sell them individually. They are all the same size. So I may just lot them all up because they're each a little designed differently, different colors, semi-different colors, different designs and whatnot. So I might just light it, uh, lot it up. Paid seven each, so 21 plus tax. I'm in it for about 22 bucks for all three of these shirts. So if I was to lot it up, I have to do a little more research in terms of what they're selling for. But I'm thinking at least, at least, um, you know, 75 to 100 bucks as a lot. Um, you know, if I could get 40 each for them and get 125, 120, uh, that might be cool as well. But yeah, Oxford clothes, I, I, that, was, that was a first. It's pretty cool. Um, this is nothing special. I got this half off. This was $4.99, uh, half off Salvation Army for $2.50. Um, I'm really trying to stay away from items that are selling for less than 20 bucks. But certain items like Lacoste, I mean, this will be a quick seller, you know. I, 20 bucks or so um my girlfriend's actually been selling on ebay as well so we might have her list this i have a couple different accounts that i use on ebay for various reasons and she's got an account as well so i'm not sure if i'm going to put this on my main store or not um i kind of like my main store i really try to focus on hiring items but we'll see what happens here uh lacoste good item good brand all right uh what do we have down here? Let's see. Oh, this is another cool item. Uh, speaking of the devil, another Oxford clothes item. Let me see if I can get that tag up there for you. Oxford clothes by Saks Fifth Avenue. And this is actually a suit. So you've got the top and then you have the, the pants right here. So uh, check out the price, guys, on this. $9.99. $9.99. This is navy blue. Um, I'm not sure what size it is. Uh, let's see. 44 regular navy blue, um, two button, 100%. Uh, let's see. It's kind of a funky little material. Super 100s, cotton. Just nice item right here. Very, very nice. I'm probably going to shoot for uh, probably a couple hundred bucks on this. We'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah. Nice brand right there. <clears throat> what else is in the bag? We got 91 people in the house. Appreciate you guys watching live. If you are watching live, you got you to hook me up right now. Hook a brother up with a like. Smash that like button. If you can, if it's possible, share this video. Maybe post it on your Facebook or tweet it out or uh, you know, share it with a friend via email. Help, help, help me out and I'll definitely help you out. So... Let's see what else we got going on. Oh, Moonlighter says, picked up about 10 vintage three-pocket Pendleton Virgin wool shirts. So 10 Pendleton Virgin wool shirts. They are clean and no odor. However, being vintage, would you dry clean before selling? I wouldn't. I wouldn't unless they really stink and reek. But uh, you got to value your time. And you got to value your money as well. It's going to cost money to get those dry cleaned. It's going to take out from your bottom line, your profits, your time. I would say no. Do not bring them. Mo Mother's mustache. <laughs> Love that name. Mother's mustache. Question. You touched on something that I've been thinking about. How can I have different seller accounts on eBay? Do they care? Do I need uh, different uh, physical uh, addresses? No, I don't. You know, eBay is not like Amazon from my understanding. Again, do your own research. But um, I've got I've probably got like five accounts. There's only uh, three that I use. It's primarily two and two or three of them that I use plus my girlfriend's account. And I helped her kind of get past her selling limits and everything. So they're all kind of interlinked together. Um, now, for me as a content creator, I've, I've kind of created different accounts to protect myself. You guys don't even want to hear the crazy things that I've had to deal with. Making videos like this, just watch what's going to happen. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to have like 30 emails. This is what's going to happen. People are going to find my store, and they're, they're all going to email me, right? And it's fine. You know, people want help and stuff. But don't, don't email if you're following right now. Don't email my store. If you have a question, Facebook or uh, my email or on the YouTube, that's more appropriate. But uh, 
you guys won't believe what happened uh, the other day. You know, somebody somehow found out the person's name who gave me the negative feedback. I don't know how they did, but there was like 20 people went and messaged this person behind the scenes and like literally destroyed their account. And I never told anybody who this person was. People they find your account when you're when you're out there in a the spotlight. You know. They weren't trying to hurt me, but by them trying to protect me and like take out this guy who left me a negative, which I deserved it. They, there's no need to protect me. They they pretty much screwed up my chances of getting that negative taken off because this other person's like, what the heck just happened? You just unleashed the like a hundred demons on me. And it just when you put your name out there on eBay and you've got people following you, weird things start to happen. So but yeah, if um back to what you were saying, if you want to have multiple accounts. Um, another reason why I have them as well is because I like to focus certain items on certain accounts. So I have one account that's just primarily suits and sport coats and blazers. And I've kind of built up that account to, to the point where, and I don't do this for all items, only specific items. And I, I probably should start doing this more, but I've kind of built up that account to where someone goes to it. They know like, this is where I'm going to come if I want to get a good condition blazer. It's going to be sized properly according to the measurements. It's all going to be there. It's going to be described accurately because I feel like a lot of customers do have a, a big challenge they face is, you know, knowing that when they buy a suit or something that the measurements provided, that's going to fit well. So um, if you want to build up kind of niche stores where you can have a specific customer come into that store, uh, it's another good reason uh, to get one. But, you know, for some people it's not worth it because when you open up a new account, you know, now you're going to have to, um, increase the selling account, the selling limits on that, you know, different, there's just, there's a million different things you have to deal with. So it might not be right for you. So I'm just looking in the comments to see what is going on. Steve, have you been selling shoes via FBA lately? I'm assuming it's almost impossible to find anything good with all the restrictions. I'm actually not restricted in pretty much anything. Um, I feel like a lot of the people that are restricted on Amazon, are people who've never sold the brand before or the item. So for example, say say you're new to FBA and you've never sold a Nerf gun on FBA, you're probably gonna be restricted. Whereas myself, I've sold hundreds of Nerf guns over the years through different clearances and buyouts and retail arbitrage and used items that I'm not gonna be restricted because I've already sold it. So um, a lot of restrictions are due to, to you know newer sellers not having any experience selling it, so they just restrict you off. Um, I'm not 100% sure of all the logistics of how it's going to work, but you know, eventually everyone's probably going to be restricted. But who knows? But I'm not really getting beat up that much on restrictions. Um, all right, let's keep moving with this haul. So uh, yesterday, actually, I was out with my mother. We went on a little thrifting trip together. Found a pair of uh, True Religion jeans. Pretty cool. Uh, didn't even look these up. They were uh, $4.99. So. Uh, True Religion uh, section straight, pretty nice item right here. Size 30, kind of smaller, but uh, probably shoot for at least 50 on those. So that was a cool item right there, looking good, looking clean. Let's see what else do we have. Oh, this is a cool item as well. I love this brand, guys. You guys got to keep this brand between us, okay? You promise? Pinky swear? Uh, this brand is Duolith Trading Company. The sport coats and jackets do extremely well. Uh, this is a very large, um, I would call it kind of like a sport coat in a sense, field jacket. I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, $6.99, extra large, Duolith Trading Company. Let's put it on, see what this is looking like. Uh, this thing's huge. Holy mackerel. So, uh I don't know what you would call this item right here. You probably can't see. Ah, this thing feels weird. Anyways, uh, really good brand, $6.99. I'll probably shoot for somewhere in the vicinity of 50 bucks on that. So that was a cool Salvation Army find. Probably net 20, 30 bucks on that. So pretty happy with that find. What else is in the bag? Oh, here's another. This is the last item I'm going to show you guys. Um, this is another cool item. Uh, popped on this at Sabres for $12.99, $12.99. This is actually a, uh, the brand is the Territory Ahead, and this is 100% genuine leather, size large. So it's a nice leather jacket, suede leather jacket. 
probably shoot for, I don't know, somewhere in the vicinity of 50 to 75. I've got to do some more research, maybe 100. I don't, I've got to do some more research on that. So I don't want to give you guys any, any wrong information. Uh, but yeah, territory ahead, leather jackets, suede leather jackets, going to make you some money. So yeah, that's the haul, little mini haul video right there for you guys. But that's about it. Getting ready to have some lunch. Going to probably hit the gym. Uh, it's a rainy day today, though. It's a rainy, rainy day. So we'll see what happens. Let's see. What do we got for questions? I'm going to answer a few questions, guys, and I'm going to roll out of here. Fear the Reaper. Steve, I'm a big fan. Just tuned in. I appreciate all the knowledge you drop. Hey, man, I appreciate you watching these videos and, uh, you know, Appreciate the support and, and you being in the comment section definitely means a lot. Better Barbie says, hello. Dang, missed the whole show, but I had to hit the yard sales. Hey, if you got to hit the yard sales, hit the yard sales. But watch the replay. There's some pretty cool information that we uh, addressed in the show. How do you know what sells? Go through the sold listings on eBay. It's the best way. Or watch my old videos. Go to go on eBay. Go to Rake and Profit. What to sell on eBay. Um, the best items to sell on eBay. I've got a whole bunch of different series from antiques, uh, antiques, uh, glassware, uh, clothing, shoes. I, I mean, I have so much videos, so many videos. It's ridiculous, guys. What clothes do you wash? Um, you know, I typically don't wash clothes. The only way I'll wash a piece of clothing is if it's just like completely dirty, if it's unacceptable. Like I think of it like this. I put myself in the buyer's shoes. I say to myself, if I was to receive this, if 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 I wasn't, if I'm anything short of very happy or at least happy, um, I'm gonna wash it. So if it's got a weird odor, if it's got a stain, if it's got some issue that's gonna take away from the value and take away from the overall buyer's experience, and I think it might risk my account of getting a negative, I'll, I'll wash it. But typically, I only buy items that are in really good shape. Kind of got away from the whole. You know, buying items with rips and tears and missing buttons. You know, it's okay at first, um, but you know, if you're a busy dude or a busy gal, and you know, time is money for you, and, and you value your time, and you've got to make over a certain amount of money per hour based on your goals, uh, it's going to be tough if you don't have employees and stuff dealing with those lower end flawed items. Hey, Veronica, good to see you. Hey, Steve, I'm trying to focus on clothing and books. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm and all the knowledge you share. Question, should I iron the clothes? So, uh, yes, you should iron the clothes. I actually have a, a little steamer downstairs. I believe it's like a Con Air steamer. So you fill in the water and it kind of hot steam comes out and you kind of iron the clothes that way. It's standing up vertically, so it's really easy. Um, but if you have a traditional iron and an iron board and you're going to list, maybe you have 10 items to list, Veronica, uh, you know, for today, take all your 10 items out, put them on a little clothing rack, and then iron the ones that you that you feel need to be ironed. Now, again, um, I, I have a pair of XO Officio pants that could have been ironed, but like in terms of like the ironing scale, one, it doesn't need to be ironed. Ten, it definitely needs it. It looks like crap. If it's like anything like, if it's like kind of like mid, like it's not too bad, it looks okay, like I'll just not iron it. Um, cause I don't think it's like, it's gonna, it's really worth it that much, like going that extra mile. Um, but if you're selling like super high end stuff, like $50, hundred bucks, $200 items, then in that case, I'd say go, go the extra mile. Cause that's going to help to separate you from the crowd and get that high price that you're looking for. But if you're selling 10, 15, $20 items, I don't think you have to really go that extra mile, but, uh, look at getting a, uh, a steamer. Is that what it's called? A little steamer to iron your clothes. Steve, can you make a video with Bonafide Hustler? I've got probably 300 videos I've done with the Bonafide Hustler, so just look back on my channel. Oh my God, I just washed 26 30-gallon bags of men's clothing. It took me a freaking week, but now they're clean, sorted, and bend. Oh, I need a routine. Stop doing that. Stop washing them all unless you just have unlimited time or you have a maid. <laughs> um, it's a lot of time, guys. I mean, thrift stores, they don't wash their clothes. They don't. They don't wash them. They, they wouldn't be profitable. It would take too much time, too much resources. Um, so they're not doing it. I wouldn't wash them. I really wouldn't worry about it. Again, if it's got an odor or a stink or a stain, wash it, pick them out. But uh, you've got to focus 
on activities that actually make you money and build your business, right? Washing clothes isn't doing that, right? What's going to build your business is going out and finding profitable items and listing them up. That's it, listing them up. Fulfilling your orders and all these different things. You can hire people. You can get around it. Um, there's ways to leverage your time, but focus on the things that matter most. <laughs> no, I have no extra time. I thought I was killing myself. Yeah, you definitely were killing yourself, uh, mustache. But anyways, guys, appreciate you all watching. I do want to say, you know, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. That's all you got to do. Hit that like button down below. Doesn't matter if you're on a desktop. Doesn't matter if you're on a laptop, an iPad, a mobile phone. Just hit the like button. It really helps out and it lets me know, you know, you know, I'm doing a good job and it's helping people, making a difference. And it motivates me to want to continue making videos. So hit the like button. It really means a lot. Also, if you want some free goodies, Look in the description below. doesn't matter what device you're on. If you're on a phone, just go in the description right now. First line of text is free book, 100 Amazing Items to Resell. I've got a free book I'm giving away that I've created with the Green Room members, which is a couple other admins. We run a membership site at greenroomuniversity.com. That's a book, a digital download book that I'll share with you 100 items that you can buy and actually make good money with that are pretty easy to find from thrift stores, garage sales, pawn shops, Craigslist, different things like that to flip on eBay and Amazon and, and beyond. So download that book, smash the like button. If you're watching the replay video down the line, uh, hello, good to see you. Subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out tons of videos all the time. I've got about, at the, point, at the, at the uh, time of this recording, I've got about a thousand videos and uh, there should be another thousand coming over the next couple of years. So you guys rock. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button. Peace on the streets and uh, Go list some items on eBay and make some money. I'll see you guys. Bye. Hey, what's going on, everybody? On YouTube, Steve here with Rake and Profit. Welcome to another Green Room show. Tonight, we've got my partner in crime, Eric. What's going on, Eric? Doing well, doing well. Just woke up, actually. Just woke up. He's in, um, he's in Thailand right now. So right now in Thailand, what is it? It's 8 in the morning, you said? Yeah, 8 in the morning. It's the exact opposite of Eastern time when they're like on that certain um, daylight savings time. Otherwise, it goes exactly central time. Awesome, awesome. And we have a special guest, good friend, Green Room member as well, Mr. Jason Jason Sloan. How you doing, man? What's going on with you? I'm awesome, Steve. Thanks for having me, man. Glad to be here, as always. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, I, I reached out to you uh, the other day to, to come on the show for Thursday and um, – you made it happen, even though you had an all day, like out of out of town thrifting trip. How'd you do today, and where'd you go? Uh, we hit a couple. We had an outlet store, a bin store, and then we hit a um, one local thrifting store as well as some Goodwills that have dollar tag sales. So we pulled, we think about 80, 85 items today, um, and you know some just great bread and butter base hits, sort of so to speak. So it was an awesome trip. All day, it was a lot of fun. Got to love it. When's the last time you've been on a long thrifting trip, Eric? Because I know you're you're out of the country now. Do you? Is there anything that stands out to you uh, before your bike trip when you were in the States? When I was in the States in December, like right before I had left, I was going out here and there with my brother just to show him some of the ropes because he's, he's a flipper. I don't know if you've gotten your brother into it at all, but he does it here and there. Yeah. My brother... I've tried to, he's not really into it too much. It's not for everybody. Um, especially my brother's kind of like, uh, I don't know. How do you say it? the, the germs and all the, the, you know, some people, they just won't walk into a thrift store because it's just, it's dirty. And he's kind of like, oh, really? that. yeah, so it's not for everybody. But, um, anyways, guys, the topic of tonight's show or this morning's show for Eric is 11 mistakes to avoid when selling clothing on eBay. So I've been selling clothing on eBay for a long time, there was one point where, you know, that was my full-time gig. That's all I did. Warehouse space, office space, employees. Now I do it very part-time. But I, I, I'm a firm believer in clothing, and I think it's a great way to make extra money, not only for just getting into the game, but even if you've been in the game for a while, I think it's a great um, skill set to own, to be able to have that knowledge of flipping clothes. Um, Jason, how long have you been selling clothing for? What's, your, what's kind of your, your quick 30-second story with clothes? Um, full time, basically about two, two and a half years, you know, on and off some years before that. And, um, you know, but really hit it full time, I guess, probably about two and a half years ago. So, 
Awesome. And Eric, I know you've kind of uh, done things a little differently. You've been pretty big into clothing, but you know, like myself and Jason, we've done really, you know, mostly eBay. You've done a lot of Etsy, which is very interesting. Yeah, I'm currently doing Etsy clothing. I do a little bit. If the home runs are modern, like the whole Etsy rules of it being vintage or not, if they're modern, I'll still put a home run on eBay. But I don't pick up like a bread and butter item anymore just because my time is being spent elsewhere with other projects and other things where I do it like on the home run basis. If I'm out and about and I find a like weathered motorcycle jacket or like a really high end Arcteryx jacket or something, I'll pick that up and then put it on eBay because it's, it is your worth your time where you're going to sell it for like 200 bucks. Exactly. So 11 mistakes to avoid when selling clothing on eBay. That's the topic. We're going to be going through all 11 mistakes and the goal of this show is to get you guys to avoid making the big mistakes that we made when we first got started because there's a lot of things that you want to do, but there's a lot of things you want to kind of stay away from. So uh, before we dive into it, we've got about 133 people watching live. I don't know, Eric, do you have the uh, the live feed up? Anybody you see in the comments? Uh, we got Professor Sales. We got CK Flip, DC Brown Eyes 1, Jason Clark from Jason's World. Uh, Henry Sherrick, Benny says he used to live in Bangkok before, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Terrace Parham, we got a lot of people. Brian Dormo, Jim Coon Cat, Rad Seller. Thanks for joining, peeps. CK Flip says, smash that like button, Raken316. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, we can't start a show before smashing the like button. So show some love, guys. Uh, 150 people watching live, 43 likes. Let's get it up to 100 likes real quick. Show some love. Uh, but let's dive into the first mistake to avoid when selling clothing on eBay. And this is a big one, guys. <laughs> Whether you've been in the game for a while or you're brand spanking new, not checking for flaws before purchasing. Jason, have you ever gone to a thrift store and maybe you were at a garage sale and you were so pumped up, you see this awesome item, or maybe it's just an average item and you pop on it, you bring it home, you go to list it, and boom, there's a tear, there's a rip, there's doggy poo inside. I don't know. Any 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 situation that uh, that comes to mind. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I flip a lot of jeans, so broken zippers happens a lot. I have missed, you know, tears this long before down the side of a leg. And, um, you know, a lot of times one of the things I find that's difficult is, especially if you're in a thrift store, the lighting may be really poor. So if, exactly. you, can find, if you can find somewhere that has great lighting in the store, it's worth even taking your items there and checking them over. That's a little... I feel tip. like the light, the light bulbs that they have are deceiving on purpose to sell more items. So I'll bring something home and look under, look at it in like a natural lighting or the, the house lighting, the, the windows and the, the sun coming in, and it'll have a spot like right on the front. I'm like, what the heck? Like it looked fine in the thrift. But then again, like you're so excited and pumped about finding it, you might have like been so doing other things, like multitasking and throwing it in the cart, and maybe you just didn't see it. The worst, the worst times that I have with missing, with missing clothing items are on the half off days. I live in Connecticut and we have a thrift store called Savers, similar to Value Village, but I feel like Savers is on like next level. Uh, Savers is a really, really big store. It's kind of like the Walmart of thrift stores in a sense. And uh, they've got a lot of inventory. So when we have the 50% off sales, uh, especially when I was full time, I mean, I would load up. I would go to all four or five of them within the state. I'd spend four or $500 at each one, you know, sometimes only 50 or a hundred, but I specifically remember spending five, $600 at one thrift store often at, at these savers, uh, half off sales. And I remember the next day just finding like so many flaws because I was so pumped up. How do you handle that? Uh, Jason, when, I don't know, where do you live and do you have a ton of sales? And if so, how do you handle that adrenaline rush? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good <laughs> that's a good question. Fortunately, my partner in crime, Karen, helps temper that somewhat. Um, or maybe I temper her. I don't know. It's hard to say. Yeah, that's a great point. And you can get caught up in the moment. It's happened to me before. You know, I was telling you before the show started, I found a pair of true religion jeans today, which are great jeans to sell. However, there are a lot of fakes. So I've learned to um, tamp down my expectations on things and realize, you know, this is a long game. It's a, uh, you're going to get a lot of hits. You're going to get some strikeouts. Occasionally you're going to hit some grand slams, 
but you've got to keep sort of a good, um, you know, even keel so that you don't, you know, have those super high highs or those super low lows that, you know, can kind of lead you in the wrong direction. So I think you got to start with the right mindset. I agree. Let's go on to uh, let's go on to mistake number two to avoid when selling clothing on eBay, and that's spending too little time flipping through the clothing racks. And I had a side note saying sometimes you have to dive deep to find the gems. Um, I'll start this off by saying, you know, when you're selling clothing, there's times where you go to a thrift store and you walk in and it's just like, boom, Harley Harley Davidson jacket, Vineyard Vines, CC Filson vintage vest, Pendleton shirt, uh, you know, vintage sports memorabilia, jersey, whatever. And it's just like jackpot city. But then there's times where you've got to really dive deep into the racks. Eric, can you talk about that? I mean, yeah, I'll even give one tip that people don't really talk about that much. We mostly are looking for men's clothing, right? Jason, is that what you're looking for too? Is mostly men's clothing? Sure. And some women's, but mostly men. Sure. But, okay. But mostly men's. Yeah. So I even like to go to the women's jacket section and find mm-hmm. like the men's jacket that the people sorted thinking that they're women's because the colors are crazy because the designs are crazy. Like a Kuji sweater, you're most likely, I still haven't found one, but I know my friends have, that have found them said they've been in the women's sweater section and they haven't been in the men's section. So I'm always checking the men's section. I did find like five really nice Patagonia jackets all lined up that were crazy colors. It's actually on my Instagram. I have a video of it and it just shows like one after another, like in a women's section is where I found it though. So that that's like part of the whole diving in, knowing where to look is also as important as actually putting in the uh, effort of flipping through all the pieces of the clothing. Jason, how thorough do you go about, you know, diving through the clothing racks? Um, you know, kind of put this into context, you know, my, my good friend, Ronnie, Ronnie Hart, who is a, you know, one of the best clothing sellers I've ever met, you know, was a mentor to me when I got started and learned a lot from him. When we went out thrifting one time, uh, I met up with him in Massachusetts. He had a different strategy. He did the complete opposite of what I did. He kind of like walked through the clothing aisle and just kind of like looked for like obscure colors and interesting designs and patterns. And he'd kind of just feel instead of me, Mm -hmm. like I was kind of going through diving and like looking through everything. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, what do you do? I think if you're looking for home runs and you sort of have the experience that Ronnie does, um, you know, and the knowledge, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I tend to look through everything just because there's still so many brands out there to learn and know. But I, I would add that also, you know, check the floor. <laughs> I know that sounds disgusting, but a lot of things get thrown on the floor that are great to sell, and there's usually not much wrong with them other than a little dust. Also, check the fitting rooms. If, if they have fitting rooms, as well as, of course, the racks that they haven't put on the official racks. Um, I think you, and, and to CP's point, you know, checking areas that you don't think normally would have your items is great because people hang things in the wrong place all the time. Or, put or they hide place. it for sale days. Yep, absolutely. Do you guys really think that, you know, I'm going to ask the, the comment section right now, everyone watching live. Do you guys honestly think, and I shouldn't say the word honestly because I don't want it to sound biased. Do you think that people actually go the day before and hide stuff and then come get it the next day? I want to know what everybody in the comments has to say about that. Uh, we'll start with Eric. Do you really think that people are doing that? Is it Absol- awesome- Dude, absolutely. Really? I've, done, I've done it before. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's a strategy. It's a strategy. If you live close to a thrift shop and you know the sales days, you know the sales cycles, the sales colors. I was doing this in um, in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where I would go the day before, go through all the clothes, find that color that's going to turn on Sunday when they change the color, and I would put it like where it's not supposed to be, and then bring it the next day. I have done it before, yes. What's a strategy for doing that? If if somebody wanted to hide something, what's the best way to hide something so a reseller doesn't see it? Because aren't resellers like for me? There's nowhere you can hide it in the men's section because I'm going through it all. You could put it in the women's section. You could put it in the kids' section and fold it a certain way. You could put it – you don't want it to be, like, super out of place because then otherwise some of the – if the employees are constantly, like, shuffling things around like they are at the Sabres that I was working at, they were always moving stuff that was out of place. You want it to kind of, like, be camouflaged, but you want to know where it's at. I'm looking at the comments section, and uh, Jillian saying, is saying yes. Sure, B is saying yes. CK Flip is Absolutely. saying yes. Absolutely. Um, literally yeah. everybody is saying yes. Uh, pop yeah. culture profit says totally. My husband does it. 
So uh, Pop Culture Profits is throwing her husband under the bus right now. <laughs> um, Bob Rack Racco says, I seen jackets over jackets for hiding purposes. <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah, that's a good one too. You would just like put a crap jacket, button it over like a really good jacket. I've never done that, but that's actually really smart. Yeah. Chicago Crown Hustler has got an amazing idea. He says, find a junky luggage bag, stuff crap in it, and hope nobody <laughs> looks at that bag. <laughs> Uh, that's hilarious. Let's I'm dive writing on. these down. <laughs> Let's uh, exactly right. Uh, Ten tips to. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, mistake number three: not <laughs> knowing your sourcing costs and or margins. Um, Jason, you you had brought this up before the show. We we kind of collaborated on some mistakes to avoid. What do you mean by not knowing your sourcing costs? Well, you know, a lot of people will buy something because they've heard about it's a great brand or it's a great item, and you know, obviously there's the back end that you have to sell it and you're going to sell it for some sort of range. But if you don't know how much you're paying for items in general, you know, are you really making money? Because obviously you have fees that get figured into that. You have your time to list it, to photograph it. You obviously have taxes, all these things that are, you know, maybe if you have a store subscription. So, and you got to know how much you're buying things on the front end. I mean, this is like real estate. You make money when you buy, not when you sell. You know, obviously you can make just a tiny little bit of money on something if you want, or you can make a lot or somewhere in between. But if you buy things for a price that's too expensive to start with, you really have kind of hemmed yourself in and you have to get a big price for it. And sometimes the market just doesn't support that. So I think it's always important to know, you know, how much you're spending for your items, you know, so that you can actually make a decent profit and it's worth your time. That's an awesome tip right there. Uh, mistake number four fourth mistake to avoid and I don't know if everybody you know on the panel is going to agree with me I don't know if, if people watching are going to agree with me I'm going to make a bold statement right here but I'm going to just put out my opinion washing every single piece of clothing is a big mistake in my opinion I think it's a waste of time um, every single piece of clothing right um, Eric what are your thoughts on that should resellers be washing every single piece of clothing or even washing a majority of clothing when selling on eBay. What are your thoughts? Am I choppy? I feel like I'm choppy right now. Am I okay? Yeah, you're, you're all right, man. You're coming through okay. smooth. Okay, cool. Um, I do, I'm, I'm with you on that. I do not wash every piece of clothing. If it's a super, super high-end item, like a starter jacket, and usually the starter jackets will have the most wear on the cuffs, I might spot wash something, like where I'm just with a toothbrush or something and, and getting a little soap in there to try to wash it to make it look better for pictures because I'm selling this jacket for like 200, 250 bucks. But for the most part, a, a shirt, a vintage shirt, I'm not going to want to wash it because it's vintage. It could disintegrate in the wash. It could damage it. I don't even want to mess with that. And it's vintage. Like people might want it like that to display. I don't know. It has like the spirit of the shirt on it and the other stuff. Usually people donate from their closet and closets aren't dirty. They're clean. They don't donate from their hampers. They don't donate from their laundry basket, you know? What are your thoughts on that, Jason? I'm the same. I mean, my thought is if you should buy it in condition that's pretty much sellable. I mean, if it really needs to be washed unless there's some vintage aspect to it, I wouldn't buy it. Um, because people who are going to get it from you, they're going to they're going to wash it anyway. It's pre-owned clothing, you know. Most I think it's kind of expected, and I think it's a huge waste of time for most people. And by the way, there are stories, you know, we've heard of people who wash things in a certain detergent, and it gets sent through the mail, and the person's allergic to the detergent. <laughs> so, oh man, you know, it, it <laughs> can they, happen, you know. So why, their why sinuses not? swell up and they can't breathe, and they <laughs> file a lawsuit. <laughs> yeah. You know, I always say, put yourself in the buyer's shoes. If you were to receive that item and be unhappy with it, and let's just say you're not like OCD with like, like you're not like some clean, neat freak. Um, you know, if you'd be unhappy with it, then yeah, you're going to want to wash it, right? If it has any weird odors, stains that you can get out, um, anything that's going to be unappealing, right? You're going to want to wash it. But taking that time to wash every single piece of clothing, it does take a lot of time. And while you might not think it does, in order to build your business, there's so many other things you could be doing. So uh, I definitely think that's a big mistake. Uh, number five, the fifth mistake to avoid when selling clothing on eBay Buying everything within a particular brand because you heard the brand was good. Uh, Jason, you know, brands like Ralph Lauren, Brooks Brothers, um, 
There's yeah. plenty of items in, in either one of those brands that don't do so well. Then on the flip side of the coin, there's other items within that brand that are just killer. Um, what are your thoughts on this situation? You know, you hear a lot of the people who are new to reselling, they say, you know, buy this brand, buy that brand. And I always think to myself, well, yeah, buy that brand if this or if that. Yeah. You've, you've put out some great guides that talk about that, like specifics and so on. And it comes back to, I think, the mentality. Some people want you to give them the answer and say, hey, just buy this brand. And I was thinking about that on uh, on the way home tonight. We were having a conversation in the car. That's kind of like, you know, me saying, hey, here's a video of me flying a plane. So now you'll know how to fly a plane. You know, it doesn't work that way. I mean, there's a lot more to it, you know, and you can't just say, hey, buy Ralph Lauren. Well, that's a pretty broad statement with a lot of different categories and, and sizes and colors and vintage and new. And it's just not that simple. Um, you've got to do your research. You've got to be willing to put some time with completed and listed and solds on eBay and really look at pricing and what you can get your items for to be successful in a brand. <laughs> I definitely agree. I'm laughing at some of these comments coming in. They're funny. Um, Eric, what's on the tip of your tongue, man? Specifically, um, I remember specifically when you first came out with that guide. I did a little, you gave it to me and I did a review on it. Um, yeah, and you didn't even know I was going to do a review on it either. I remember you gave it to me because like, hey, bro, hey, bro, like look what I just put out. Like this is, I'm really proud of this. And I was like, dude, you actually just like hooked me up with the guide. Like I'm going to hook him up with like a review. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so I went through it. And ran. I specifically remember seeing it, but not picking it up. It was Arcteryx, and I was in Oregon at the time. I had saw it, and I didn't buy it. But it was a women's jacket. It was a full zip, and I should have. It was maybe like four or five bucks, and it probably would have sold. I don't know, forty dollars and up. And I didn't buy it, but every other piece of Arcteryx I bought for men has been a really, really good score. I recently bought one, just a regular shirt for a woman, and it. Like I couldn't even get like thirteen dollars for it. It was like an yeah. older, older shirt. It was, um, it wasn't really a cool color. It wasn't really cool material. It was just polyester. All it had was like a little arcteric uh, skeleton on it, and it, it, I seriously could not even sell it for like fifteen or best offer. It was, I just ended up redoing it to go well. So even a killer brand like Arcteryx, there are, I mean, for the vast majority, like ninety percent of it, ninety five percent of it is going to be really, really high resale, high quality. But there is like a very slim, slim technical, like women's this and that. People don't want it that you still probably shouldn't buy. And I figured that out. Jason said it best. You've got to spend time in the in the sold listings, in the completed. And, you know, the books that I wrote, 101 Killer Clothing Brands, 102, it's just merely a reflection of the time I spent in the sold listings. And, you know, those books could help you, but you can learn a lot of that on your own for free. You just got to spend the time. You know, if you're new, if you're new to selling clothes, new to reselling, before you spend any money buying anything, spend time doing the things that you can do that are free because you have more time than money. So spend time in a sold listing, spend time in a completed listing, spend time networking with people, networking with people, and uh, that'll definitely get you going in the right direction. <clears throat> um, mistake number six, actually before number six, um, Eric, why don't you tell them really quick what they need to do? We're about twenty minutes into the show right now. Two things they need to the show. Two things they need to do. They well, first of all, they need to like the show because we got ninety-two likes, but there's like two hundred people watching. So that's wow. like not even half of the people have attempted to like that button. We gave so many good tips already. Like I can't believe it. And what's the second thing they need to do, man? Something related to the green room down in the description. It's free. If, if they haven't, if they haven't already, get the book. There's one killer tip on Harley Davidson shirts in there that I want to go over. I actually want to make a correction if it's possible. It's a tip that has to do with clothing. It's also a correction to the book. I didn't write this section. You didn't write, the, write this section, so it wasn't blood on our hands. But the Harley Davidson section of the book, you'll see that it says make sure that it has a Harley Davidson tag. That is not true. Harley Davidson can be licensed to a lot of other uh, shirt companies. Specifically, this brand called 3D Emblem. It is like vintage t-shirt gold. These shirts can go upwards of 100 on like the low end, maybe 70, upwards to like $400, $500 for these shirts. I've found, I think, 10 of them since I've been thrifting in the last two years. I think I found 10. And I've sold them for over $1,000. So look for this brand, 3D wow. Emblem, when it has to do with 
Harley Davidson. It's in the guide. Go to the link, download it if you haven't already. Just go to that little Harley Davidson guide and think about 3D Emblem. Awesome. Well, thank you. That guide he's talking about is the first link in the description that is on 100% free. Uh, let's move in uh, to the next tip. And um, it's not a tip, but it is a tip. It's a mistake to avoid when selling clothing on eBay. <clears throat> and this is number six, scared to experiment with other types of clothing. Many clothing sellers will stick to only one type of clothing. And I guess to put that in into better terms, you know, a lot of people I've noticed they get into selling clothing and they only stick with like polo shirts or maybe they only stick with jeans. And, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I do feel like people are missing out on some of those home runs by avoiding, you know, some of the, uh, the, the sections that aren't as popular like ties and hats and sport coats. I mean, finding that, that Hermes tie could bring you in a hundred bucks, finding that specific Brooks Brothers suit, the higher end ones, uh, you know, could bring you in 100, 200 bucks. What are your thoughts on that, Jason? Um, and, and feel free to, you know, to disagree if you don't, if you don't um, feel the same way I do. Do you think that somebody should stick with one niche or do you think it's a mistake sticking with just one thing? <laughs> That's a great question. And you might think that I would think that I would say you should stick with one niche, but the reality is I decided to get into one niche at first because it was something I understood and helped me become a better reseller in general. But it's about time for me now because I am fortunate. I live in an area where there's a lot of clothing around me for a cheap price in, in the various thrift stores that I have in this area. So if I walk into a store and there's 12,000 items on the sales floor and I'm only going to focus on the 400 pair of jeans, I have to spend more time now to go to another store and see the next 400 pair of jeans and the next one. Why not start branching out in some other areas in each store instead of spending, being in there for 30 minutes. Now I'm in there for an hour and 15 or an hour and 30 or an hour and 30 minutes. And I can look through the suits. I've started looking at shoes. I've started educating myself better about, about shoes. Cause a friend, a good friend of mine is, is doing, you know, 200 K a year in shoes on eBay. Um, you know, some of the, the, the thrift items we've taught for women's that we've been finding lately, you know, low priced items. I mean, there's no reason not to eventually expand out a niche. A niche is great at first. I think when you're first learning and it allows you to sort of focus in, but after that, think about your surroundings and if there's more things there, absolutely expand. Let's move on to number, uh, seven. And I want Eric to touch on this, um, because Eric spent a lot of time helping us with the books, the accounting, taxes, uh, different things with our with our specific business over at the green room. And I, I think Eric has a lot of insight with this, his non-professional, non-legal CPA advice. Um, forgetting about taxes, right? And, and Jason actually came up with this idea. Um, a lot of sellers get into the game, Eric, and they forget about taxes. Maybe they have an amazing year and they do $21,000 on eBay through PayPal. What's going to happen when... <laughs> When one of those lovely sellers yeah. do 200 transactions plus $20,000. Yeah, if, if you do that, if you, if you trigger the 200 plus 20K, you're going to get a 1099K in your inbox. What's a 1099? January. For people who don't know. For, for people who don't know 1099, 1099 is, a, is a IRS form that's used to report miscellaneous income. And there's a couple different uh, 1099 forms, but the 1099 case is specifically for – internet income via Amazon, eBay, Etsy, um, those kind of like credit card or PayPal transactions. And why is it important for somebody to compare their 1099 to what they claim on their, on their return? The 1099 K you're going to get is going to be a gross, huge number of gross sales, not, not taking into account returns because when, when PayPal calculates the 1099 uh, figure, it's whatever you brought in. It does not take out any expenses. It does not take out return expenses. It does not take out fees. It does not take out anything. It, ta it takes into account what you brought in and that's it. So it's up to you to keep track of your expenses, the returns and those kind of things. Otherwise you're gonna be overpaying in taxes, which is uh, not exercising your right as an American citizen. Well, well said right there. Uh, I'm looking into the comments right now and uh, there's a bunch of things coming in. Somebody says, I'm still waiting on mine. I know Amazon just gave the, uh, 
just gave out their 1099 the other day. Yeah, um, I got the hit with the email with the Amazon, eBay. Uh, I, I don't think I'll have that much on Etsy um, this last year. Sure, B says, don't forget about taxes. Uh, Rad Sellers saying, oh my God, thank you. I really appreciate that. So um, let's move on to number eight because I do want to kind of open up the floor for some questions. I think there's a lot of value in just answering questions one on one. So, uh, mistake number eight to avoid when selling clothing on eBay is not taking advantage of half off sales and promotions. Jason, do you have any in your area? Yeah, we actually, um, we have a 25% off senior citizen day. So sometimes uh, Karin's mom will go with us and we will take advantage of that. Actually, yesterday or two days ago, we actually got the 25% off just on our own. So maybe I am looking old, Karin, uh, <laughs> so, as someone said in the chat earlier. But yeah, and the area that we source today has uh, progressive markdowns throughout the week. And then at the end of the week on, thir on Thursdays, actually, they have a $1 sale on certain tags. And it's usually 500 items, probably, I would estimate. All different things across the store, just in clothing alone. And, you know, for a buck, you know, you can't go so, but so wrong when you're buying something for a dollar, you know? I mean, even if you don't make a tremendous amount on it. And if you don't take advantage of those days and make specific attempts to go to places on those days, I mean, you're, you're spending a lot more money than you need to. And that's obviously not ideal. Even if you can't sell it and you got into it for a dollar, you could probably recoup that dollar at a yard sale or you yeah. could redonate it and that tax write off will be more valuable than a dollar. So. Yeah. so there you go, straight from the horse's mouth. Uh, mistake number nine, this is a big one. Uh, out of these 11 mistakes that we're going over, guys, this is probably one of the most important ones. So listen up, we have 265 people watching live. If you're new, especially, Open up your ears. This is really, really important. Uh, mistake number nine. <laughs> I'm just reading exactly what I wrote. Taking really crappy <laughs> pictures with distractions in the background. <laughs> also taking pictures that display uh, the wrong color. Um, in parentheses, bad lighting. So, um, I'm going to be the devil's advocate on this because I know you guys are probably very, very particular about your pictures. I know Steve is all mannequin, shop, lighting, nice oh, camera, or at least nice iPhone. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm sure I'm sure Jason's the same way because he looks pretty pro with the the filing of the uh, bins behind him. So I'll I'll play devil's advocate after you guys talk about how good pictures have to be. Oh. Yeah, I, I would say Steve, I'm 100 percent on board with you, and only because of this reason. I get so many people that ask me questions about the clothing items that I'm selling that cl clearly have not read the description or the item specifics. Because the answer to the question is there. So what am I to take? From that? I'm to take from that they they've seen a picture and a shiny object in the title, and now they're ready to buy potentially. And my picture is the only thing they can't try it on, guys. All they can do is see it, and they want to be able to see it as it really is. So that's why I think it's so important. Steve, what do you think about Steve's this? Got a this motorcycle now? Is this important, Steve? man? Hold on one second. Did you start riding choppers? I can't. I, uh, I, I'll show choppers. You Steve Reagan. Yeah, I'm actually going to be starting up a YouTube channel based around Harleys and my new bike. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's riding season in Connecticut right now, isn't it? Check out this freaking Harley Davidson leather jacket. Nice. 45th nice. anniversary. Awesome. I just I couldn't help myself. Um, next. So you guys are super oh, – hold on, hold on. You guys are into super nice pictures. Um, I would say don't let it – choke you out if you just need to get the stuff listed like get if, it, if you have like literally like 20 things you need to list uh i've actually had a pretty good experience just laying stuff on the floor taking pictures in decent lighting with my phone if it's like a really tech if the person knows what that item is like it's a technical jacket or it's like a patagonia jacket like they know what that is and they know the sizing like i, I know chris is on board with this too where the sizings are pretty universal for like a medium Patagonia jacket or a large or whatever where I have laid it on the ground and it's sold same day or the next day where I would have been too lazy to get out my my studio or I don't have a studio and I was like I don't want to list it because I don't have a studio like I was making these excuses but when I just threw it on the ground took the pictures I still sold it for 250 bucks like it was a it, there are certain situations where I think pictures are not necessarily it's better to be up and not have amazing pictures than not to be up at all 
is what that's I'm gonna, to say. That's, that's going to be a perfect segue. I'm going to skip number 10 and go to 11, then I'm going to go back to number 10 because this is just perfect. Not listing your items regularly. Regularly. I can't even say that word. Sourcing more than you list. Um, like Eric says, I mean, you can buy anything, right? You can buy the most profitable item in the world. But, you know, it ain't worth nothing just sitting at your house, right? Like this leather jacket that's been sitting here for a month that I need to get listed up. Just been, you know, <laughs> making my living room look beautiful. Um, Starting the Harley Club. But for me, for certain items, I don't mind, like, not listing them up super quick. Like, that Harley leather jacket's only going to go up in value in time. Like, it's in mint condition. Like, that thing's never going to go down. Like, I, that's just my opinion. But as a rule of thumb, that's that's a very – that's very bad to say, especially on a live show, because you really should get everything listed as fast as possible. Um, yeah. You know, right. you know, I remember when I first got started, I always say this, you know, I was, I turned my parents' house into a JC Penny outlet. I was buying, 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 buying. I had so many items that I just didn't list and you got to get it up. <sighs> Whoa. What just happened? Who sold something? Burton uh, hoodie sold on eBay and it had, <laughs> Awful pictures. It was laying on the <laughs> tile. <laughs> Jason, so, what tips do you have for uh, listing items uh, quicker and more efficiently? Very I think nice. you. I mean, I mean, he's right. Of course, you you don't want to take so much time that you're paralyzed, and you know, you take an hour to yeah. to take a, you know two photographs. I mean, I think having a system in place for how you doing it, how you do it, and doing it pretty much the same way every time. You know, if you're Checking items in, checking items in, looking them over, then making sure that you don't have any flaws, then taking the pictures, then doing the listing. You know, do it that way every time. Like, don't don't kind of jump around and 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 do it completely different every day because you'll end up kind of confused with where things are in your process. You got to have a process for where it is in that too. Like, all right, when it's in this bin, I know I got to take photos. And now it's over here. I'm going to list it. You know, because when when you've got 10 items to list and 10 items to take photos of and 10 items to store, not a big deal. When you got a thousand, that's a whole nother story because you can absolutely get, you know, you got a wall like this behind you of stuff to list and it's actually in process and we, we actually have those things in process. You got to have some sort of process, even if you don't call it a process, you've got to be able to do that. I think if you want to scale your business to any kind of meaningful level or larger level. Exactly. Find what works for you. Get into a routine. I've always found the more I list, the more I kind of build up my momentum. It's when I when I take you know a week or two weeks off, it's so much harder to, to get back into it. It's like going to the gym. You know, have you guys ever gone to the gym and you're working out every single day and it's like nothing, and then you take like a month off and it's just like getting back into the gym is just like the hardest thing possible. It's the same thing with listing. So right. you now I've even found like. When, when listing on eBay, even if I just list like a couple items a day, right, um, versus taking like five to six days off, that always seemed to work best for me. So um, if you've got an employee, that's going to be a different game. I know uh, Rockstar Flipper, if you guys watch Casey, anybody watch Casey? I know you guys sure. do. He had people awesome. in the comments were like, he's doing a live stream after this, so I can go one to the other. So. <laughs> <laughs> Reseller uh, YouTube video hopping, not bar yeah, hopping. Uh, all day. <laughs> so I forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah, Casey. I don't remember what I was saying, but check his video out. What was I saying? Do you remember? Uh, you were talking about systems, employees. Casey, does he have an employee? Oh, yeah, you know? he has employees. So yeah. for some people, you don't have to worry about like getting in a listing routine. You just have to worry about getting your employees to show up and you know, <laughs> loading up the racks. Um, for them, but anyways, let's let's jump into the last uh, the last uh, mistake to avoid number eleven, and this was a mistake that Jason had uh, put onto our handy dandy little list, and that's underestimating shipping hmm. costs. Uh, what tips do you have, especially for the beginner out there? Uh, Jason will have you go first, and Eric, you could weigh in. What tips do you have to um, be able to accurately estimate how much something will cost to ship? Well, of course, you can do calculated shipping, and if you're going to do that, you need to have a scale <laughs> because you need to know how much things weigh. Now, a lot of clothing items are really light and can go, and they can go with first class. It can go under a pound, but when you get into heavier items like jackets, blazers, jeans, shoes, things like that, they're obviously going to be over a pound, and you know it's going to be a little more expensive to ship them. I would say for the am or the person just starting out, the average person. I would start off with calculated shipping at first before you move into free shipping or even flat shipping 
Because if you do that and you accurately weigh the item and any packing materials you're going to need with it, you're not going to be very far off very often. And you're not going to lose a bunch of money on shipping. And to me, it's like you don't want to lose money on shipping. You may not really make much, but you you certainly don't want to lose money on it. And I perfect example, my niece was, is pretty new to eBay, and I'm about to out her, call her out right here on the internet. But she she sold something, a train set that weighed like 15 or 20 pounds, and she had put she had put like a, a flat fee in there, and it shipped to California. And this thing, and it oh, I hate like, it when that happens. It costs like, and she's in Virginia, so this thing costs ah. like 40 bucks to ship across ah. the country. And she, I think, at that point, lost money on the sale because she had vastly underestimated the shipping. She thought, I thought it would be like 10 or $12. I'm like, not to California. It won't be. Yeah, so, East Coast to West Coast is like the worst when you have your tough. heavy item. I, I like cringe when I, I just sold a backpack and it, it went to California. And it was like $35 a ship and it like just completely cut into like, I made like $20 after everything. I sold it for like 75 bucks. So I was like, wow. And then it was like 30 to ship. So I made like 20 right. bucks. Did, did you promise priority? No, I just edited FedEx, like the FedEx. Um, wow, it was, it was even, it was even thirty five post. It was yeah, even thirty five because it was. It's it's big. It was a right. um, Jansport uh, uh, frame, external frame bag. So the thing was big. Did you try UPS? Because sometimes you got to just jump around to all these different like shipping platforms, and sometimes one will be like ridiculously cheap. I just did FedEx because that's what eBay's partnered with I now. Think it was I, I did it on my phone. My mom told me how much it weighed. I just did it then yeah. and there and emailed her the label. Yeah. Definitely, if you guys are new, go over to USPS.com and purchase a bunch of free um, shipping supplies. For me, I don't know if you already mentioned this, Jason, Jason but my, my kind of like uh, go-to shipping method, especially if it's heavy and a little bulky, not like a not like a suit or anything, but if it's a little bulky, is those padded flat rate envelopes, and I think sure. those are like five ninety five or something, maybe even six something now. I forgot six thirty if you're top rated. Yeah, yeah. so just I know the prices like just stuff. yeah keep going up. I remember at one point, weren't they like five and a quarter <laughs> a couple of years ago? Um, but go yeah. over there, get a bunch of free supplies. You know, for the uh, like polo shirts, for like the button fronts, sixteen ounces or less. You're shipping from from eBay on your computer, go with the poly bags, right? You can get a boatload of them for like five cents each or even less. You know, you know Steve, you're so right. And the reality is guys, you're going to have to learn how to ship. <laughs> if you're going to sell on eBay, you're going to have to take a little time and learn how to ship things and not lose your shirt on it and turn a profitable sale into a loss. So just, it's just part of the cost of doing business. You have to learn. Ship shipping actually becomes easier than listing once you learn Yep. Uh, the, like shipping doesn't change listing right. and, and strategies and and markets change but shipping right. for the most part it's pretty it's pretty static the only thing is rates go up a little bit sometimes in your favor sometimes not the big thing that was in our favor within the last couple of years was that first class went from uh, 13 ounces mm. to 16 ounces. that helps so, so that much was, that, that helped a lot for especially clothing people that you could get most things under a pound shipped for like 315 anywhere in the country so the the shipping strategy is kind of stay it'll, stay it'll pretty much stay the same for like five ten years yep or or forever and but the listing is actually way harder so if you can list then you should not be afraid of shipping swamp picker just threw out an amazing tip for everybody in terms of shipping and he said in all caps regional a boxes so uh, a's and b's the b's are bigger um, how does that work exactly Jason the regional do you ship do you ship with the regional rates? I don't really use those in mine very often because I'm usually shipping small arrives and padded flat rates. Or, okay. So I'm not the best person to ask on that. Eric, what do you know about the regional rate A's and B's? I was, was going to say, I bet you're going straight to me. So <laughs> I, for my belief is that the country is kind of set up into zones and the, the A, B, and C box is – they're different prices. It's kind of like a small, medium, or large flat rate box, right? Like the the zone, the postal zone A or regional A, regional B, regional C has to do with just the size of box, right? They're they're all different sizes, yeah. And then yeah. depending on what zone it goes to, it's like a flat rate going to a zone rather than they do have weight flat. limits though. There's weight they do limits have, on. Well, I mean, so yeah. there's 
So does so does flat rate. Flat rate has a weight limit too. If you're sending, but it's like a lot a less though. Okay, it, I think yeah. it was like twenty so, pounds or something. I, it's been a long time since I've researched what the weight limits were. I'm sure I you know. Quick I haven't used uh, zone. I haven't done the the regional yeah. boxes in probably like over two years. See, I'll use the the regional boxes if it's going kind of far, like. Like if you use the regional boxes and you're shipping from like Connecticut to like California, like it's not going to help. Um, at least the A's and B's. I've I forgot there was C's. I don't even think I've ever used a C. Is, what does a C even look like? Is it huge? I don't remember. It, it might Are just there be C's? different shapes. Yeah, I didn't even know there were C's. But um, regional for me, the A's and B's work if like you're shipping like seven or eight states over. Like. Hmm. I don't know. Anyways, do your research, guys. Uh, for bigger, bulkier items that are that are shipped kind of like halfway across the country, those have always done well. Or if it's bigger, bulkier, b bigger and bulkier, and you're shipping really close, that can work out as well for the A's, I believe. Um, somebody just says regional A is a 15 pound limit. I think the B's are like 20 pound limits. Um, there so is no C. I made that up. Did you? Okay, because I'm thinking <laughs> yeah, to myself, I is there? <laughs> I'm like, I've never heard of a C. But you know, yeah, he's a smart up. guy. He knows his stuff. But it is eight in the morning in Thailand, so maybe he's wrong. <laughs> um, so we've got 277 people watching live right now. We got 15 minutes left. We're gonna open up the floor for questions. So if you guys have any questions for myself, Eric, or Jason, drop a line below. Hit the like button, guys. It really lets us know that you're enjoying these videos, and we can make more videos and help you out. Um. Also, if you've enjoyed watching these videos and this video in particular, you could check out more from Prof Sales over at his YouTube channel, Prof Sales, P R O F Sales, right? Uh, where it. else can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Facebook. I'm, well, I'm a member of the Green Room, but I'm also in the Rebels of Reselling. That's our new Facebook group. So, Rebels of Reselling. Awesome, and, awesome. And Eric does a lot of writing, and he, he does some blog posts periodically for the Green Room, greenroomuniversity.com forward slash blog. We've got a bunch of free articles over there, a lot he's contributed to. But um, let's go into the comments right now and answer a couple questions. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a line below. Um, did any of you guys see any questions that have come in, uh, anything that we can – Help some people out. Everyone's with. discussing if the C box exists or not. <laughs> <laughs> These guys don't know what they're talking about. There is no C box. No, no, no. They're saying they're saying it did. It, it was. Oh. And he just got Thailand internet gone. Shot. Boom. Anyways, um, I'm looking to see what comments are coming in. J Brown vids raking is the man. No, J Brown vids you the man. Um. Yep. Yes, we one here about uh, when selling clothes you from Terrence. Do you cater your items towards specific seasons you're selling in? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, to some degree, yes, but clothes will sell year-round. I mean, you really can't afford to just say, hey, I'm just going to take everything down because it's summer and I've got coats. You know, people will buy year-round now, and plus people are buying from all over. I mean, someone buying your item from, you know, a state where it's colder or hotter or rainier or sunnier um, or a country for that matter, if you're using global shipping or shipping overseas. So I would say just, you know, you can definitely push up some items in certain seasons, maybe, you know, to your market. But overall, you could just keep items up year round, I think. Someone said, please summarize the 11 mistakes. We'll do that. We'll do that at the end of the show. We'll do a quick. We'll summary. do that at the end of the show, and I'm also going to pull this video into a blog post with those 11 mistakes on the in, in writing, so you could copy it, paste it to a Word document, and print it out if you want. Awesome, man! I, I like I like your thinking right there. Uh, question, Eric. Let's have you answer this, and let's have you answer it from an Etsy angle. What percentage of your clothes sell on Etsy? Oh. Uh, Versus, versus like my entirety of having listed like per month or it was or a like very for, broad forever it was a very broad question i mean let's say you list up 100 items after 90 I've, days i've had, had sell-through rates vary month to month anywhere from i'd say 10 per 10 to 15 percent anywhere to like three percent um if if it, it varies depending on the season and I'm very static with my listings. I think I have about 150 to 180 things up right now. And I, I sell a couple things every month. So it's 
about three to 15%. That's like a huge range, but that's mm -hmm. probably my monthly sell through rate. Jason, we got a really good question for you here. Um, cause I know you sell a lot of jeans and this may apply. Uh, what are your thoughts on using stock photos in your listings on eBay? Have you done it before and why or why not should somebody do it? I wouldn't do it. Um, first of all, if you're selling pre-owned, you're not really demonstrating what the item is. You're showing a stock photo. Clothing is specific and jeans are very specific to people um, and really uh, most clothing is. They want to see what it looks like. Now I get if it's new and you have, you know, you've got a whole size run of them. That may be fine in that case if there's no real variation. But man, you could take 10 pair of the exact same jeans, exact same brand and fit and size and they would all look a little different. Um, so I, I don't think I would ever use stock photos for pre-owned items in my opinion. Awesome. Somebody was uh, made a comment saying, using those supplies for storage is a federal offense. I know someone who got nailed for that. And I think they're saying, don't go to USPS.com and buy the supplies and use it as like packing material. Yeah, bad idea. <laughs> Not a good idea. Well, I know. For storage, I think they're talking about those, um, the priority mail, um, like those plasticky, it's like plastic, but it looks like card, like cardboard made out of plastic bins. Yeah. People used to use those for storage. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, those things are handy. I love those things. And they don't really, they really are. Yeah, they, they don't give them out. They don't really give them out anymore. I have one that I found like in the trash can. I think I pulled it out, and you, I use it now. But I use it to pull my priority mail packages from my car to the post office. So I am using it for its intended purpose. Um, I don't know who's been selling the longest here, but I always remember people saying that the post office used to give out free tape. Do they still do it, or did they used to do it, or is it a rumor? Like. Like you, you ever see like the USPS tape that they that they put on? It looks really cool. Was there ever a time where they gave that out for free, or do they? I I remember them giving out priority mail tape for free, but you have to use it on priority mail packages. But right. this was like probably five years ago. Because I think they stopped doing that. Yeah, they've stopped doing it here. Here they don't do well, it. I don't see what they do anywhere else. Because the fraud, waste, and abuse. That's why. Right. Right. Somebody says, I believe I had a listing removed for using a stock photo for TRX bands. So, you know, that is one thing that you have to worry about with stock photos. Sometimes it has a copyright on it. Yep. Um, I don't know. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it must be a really big brand if you're going to get taken you, down. You can use stock photos on eBay for things like DVDs that are brand new if you're selling. That you can do. I, I do know because I read – because I had some DVDs that, that were new. That were new. But technically, if it's used – you're still not supposed to use a stock photo, you know, so, but always check the rules, you know, cause they can always change. If anyone's sick, there is a medic in the house right now. The medic medic says, has anyone ever taken your listing photos and use them in their own listings for the same item? What did you do? This is coming from the medic. Uh, wow. No. Has it ever no, happened to you guys? Nope. I think Craigslist Nothing Hunter, well. anybody see Craigslist Hunter's, uh, one of his latest videos where he sold this, this globe, right? He sold this big globe. I forget what exactly, it was a globe. That's all I know. And he sold it through the, um, the global shipping program. And if you guys don't know what that is, what that program is, it's a program eBay, um, created to be able to ship internationally and, and make it safer for, for us sellers. Um, so he sold it internationally through the global shipping program and he got a message from eBay saying that, the dimensions were off. So they're not going to allow, they're not going to complete the transaction, which meant that the customer won't get it, but they still paid Craigslist Hunter. So Craigslist Hunter got 500 bucks and they said they were going to destroy the item, right? Hmm. Well, in his video, you guys go, go check him out and go check out his latest video or it was like a week ago. He found that item sold like, I don't know if it was weeks later or months later with the same pictures and his employees hand in the picture and everything. eBay must have, I don't know if eBay, when eBay says they destroy an item, they might auction it off or somebody might have taken it and sold it. But uh, that was pretty interesting right there. Have you ever had an item destroyed by eBay? No, I haven't. No, that, he, gets, he gets these weird one-off cases like I've never <laughs> heard, heard of. Where he, he was like fighting with somebody about a laptop and then the globe, the global globe. Like that's so confusing to me. <laughs> How do you handle people lowballing on best offers? Eric, have you ever had an item for sale, like 200, 300 bucks, and they come in with a sweet offer of like $9 and change? What are you uh, doing that, that, doesn't happen, man? that doesn't happen to me too often. That just sounds like a, um, 
a troll, like probably yeah, a follow a follower troll or something, somebody that's just trying to mess with you that, that knows your eBay store. But uh, you can set minimums. I would just if if that item keeps that keeps happening and I didn't set the minimum off to begin with, I would just set a minimum accepted offer at like two fifty and then auto decline everything else. Mm. Right. What do you what do you do, Jason? I ultimately I usually do the same thing as Eric says. <clears throat> However, every once in a while, um, I will type to someone if I'm in the mood and just say, sorry, I can't go that low. And sometimes the offer goes way back up. Now, I don't know that it, in your extreme example, but you know, if it's just low, but just you know, not ridiculously low, sometimes somebody just wants to see if you're desperate to get rid of it. You know, And you can still sometimes make a sale out of it, but it's... I, I like his his solution too. Is just put your you know your lowest up, decline everything below a certain level, and move on. You don't even have to do anything that way. It does it automatically. We got a comment that came in from where was it? Oh, from Jason three three seven eight four. I like to be the first bid on Lamborghinis. So he comes in low and just he gets that good feeling. You know what? I'm yeah. one day I'm, I'm going to be the one to win this. But uh, hey, I like man. his first name. That's good. You know. Oh yeah, his first name is definitely Chris. I mean, if it was Steve, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I just opened an eBay account. haven't Haven't listed. Uh, waiting for scale. Did you say shipping rates have gone up? Uh, yes, shipping rates are always going up. Uh, they won't stop going up. Seem to go up with inflation and any other reason that right comes out. But uh, yeah, you know, they shipping do prices. sometimes widen. Yeah, they do sometimes widen the the uh, weight though. So that yeah, that was good. Can, right, can help you in a way. Yeah, that was good for clothing. If you're new, yeah, don't. Way. If you're new, don't let this thing stop you. I can I go on a rake and profit rant real quick. Is that okay? Go for yes. It. There's never a, a great time to start any business. There's never a great time. There's always a million reasons why you shouldn't. Oh, the shipping prices have gone up. Trump is president. <clears throat> Eric. Eric's a huge fan. I had to throw that at him. Um, what are what are the other million? <laughs> He doesn't even laugh. If, what are anything, the other that's a, <laughs> if anything, that's a reason to start a business. He, was, he has no he, facial reaction. He's like, Steve, that is not a joke. He's a small business wrote, supporter. Just, I didn't want to get into politics. Somebody actually I'm said, just like, messing with you. I'm just question. messing with you. No, but that's, a, that's a good reason to start a business. But, but <laughs> there's always a million reasons, right? Shipping costs, competition. Um, you know, on Amazon, things are getting gated off. There's never a right time. So, you know, if um, – you know, if you want to get started, don't let the price of shipping, you know, stop you. Don't let the, the prices at thrift stores stop you. There's always an opportunity. If there's a will, there's a way. So, um, yeah, I just have to get that out of the way. Uh, what what threshold? Will... Somebody actually asked a question about. Keep going. Oh, sorry. Somebody actually asked a question about Etsy real quick. I could answer that. They said. Um, for Etsy, do I have to hand make everything? Can I sell used things? Uh, you do not have to hand make everything on Etsy. You can sell anything secondhand as long as it's considered to be vintage. And Etsy's definition of vintage is 20 years old or older. So right now, that's 1997 or below. Uh, let's see. A bunch of comments coming in. Don't let anything stop you from selling from Gwen Hill. It's going to be on my tombstone right there. Uh, Jennifer H says just upgraded to premium store. Do you have a premium store, guys? Yeah, I do. Yeah. There's a few different tiers. Do you have Do you have the the first tier up, or are you at the? the I know there's like a top dog tier that's like pretty expensive. Yeah, I'm not the anchor store. That's like yeah, a crazy amount of listings. It's just a math problem. Like if you save enough to you know have the store and being able to run sales is nice too then it's worth getting the store. But as Pete will tell you, sometimes you don't even need the store because they give you so many free listings. A lot of times eBay goes on those binges where they're like, here, list 500 items. Here, list 1,000 items for free. You know, sometimes you don't have to do that, but I do like, you know, knowing that each month I'm going to get those 1,000 items for, you know, no insertion fees. And, and I'm able to run a sale, which is nice as well. Lizzie wants to know if we're paid uh, by eBay for these videos. <laughs> Jason, yeah, right. are you collecting a check behind the scenes that I don't know about? Because if you are, I want my cut. Steve, yours is in the mail. If <laughs> eBay sees this, please issue us some stock options or something if you're not going to pay us outright, or at least like a complimentary roll of tape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> free packing supplies, free shipping supplies, some more. <laughs> Another load. 
So we've got about three more minutes until this show is going to end. Again, if you guys are enjoying this, like the video really uh, helps out a lot. Check out Prof Sales, YouTube, Prof Sales. Um, YouTube should pay, right? Yeah, YouTube does pay us for videos. So that's pretty cool right there. But they're not paying us. It's the Google AdSense program right. that's paying us. So, the advertisers. Which right. is pretty much the same exact thing. But anyways, uh, what is the best scale to buy for weighing clothes? Just opened an eBay account. Haven't listed it yet. Any scale. I mean, what do you think? Go on Amazon, type in shipping scale, look for something with decent reviews that's going to get to your house in two days. It'll, it should be under 25 bucks. Um, if you're just doing clothes, you probably don't need the just detachable display. You probably can just get away with the uh, AccuCheck one with the display attached to it because you're not going to be weighing these like big 45 pound packages. If you're planning on getting into Amazon, FBA, or bigger uh, boxes to be shipped, try to get the one with the, the, the detachable screen right. so you can move it out of the way when you look at the boxes. Yep. Shouldn't be more than 25 bucks. Somebody says anything over 13 ounces become becomes a first class parcel. It's anything 16 ounces or less is first class. Right. Um, oh, here's a good question from Ben Lott. What's going on, Ben? How long does it take to get my selling limits to 25,000 if I am a new seller with a $1,000 sale limit? One last thing, are, are buying stealth eBay accounts risky? Cheers. Uh, Eric, you want to dive into this one? Uh, I, I really don't know the answer to that because there isn't it like a protected algorithm by eBay that they like monitor how much you sell versus like how much problems you have to like give you the trust, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it takes time. I've had times where you get the right person on a phone and you ask them to increase the selling limit and it jumps from yeah. one to 10. Um, when I had, when I opened up my second account, um, I didn't have any feedback on that account, but I did have my other account that had like 1500 or 2000 feedback since it was associated under the same name. They, they put me up to like 50,000, like instantly, but that's right. because I already had that other account. So it really depends. I mean, to get up to 25,000, I'm going to say 90 days, but I could be way, way off. Let's see what everyone in the comments has to say about that. Um, what's up Hector Valdez? Good to see you. Almost or yeah, almost antique. What's going on? So here's a question for Jason. Let's have this be the last question and um, then we'll give our closing closing goodbyes. Uh, can I sell winter clothes in the summer to countries in the S hemisphere? Why not? Sounds like science. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as long as they are countries that you're willing to ship to, which in the Southern Hemisphere, you got most of South America, a big chunk of Africa, Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, I think. I think those are all... Have you sold to Africa before? I don't think I ever have. Maybe once. I mean, yeah, maybe something to Morocco, I want to say. I don't know. I, it, but it might have been... I want to say yes, at least one item. I'd have to go back and look, but sure. I don't think it's a big deal. Like people get caught up in clothing, like seasonality wise. Like, yeah, obviously like in the summer months, like it's going to sell a little bit better winter months, winter clothes are going to sell a little better, but right. these items are going to sell regardless if you're opted into the global shipping program or, and if you're shipping just internationally, I mean, there's like they say, there's an ass for every seat. There's, um, there's always somebody out there looking for something for one reason or another, whether it's a vacation in nine months or, maybe just because they're on the other side of the world and, and the, the temperature and weather is different. So if you've sure. got an item, list it up. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, smack, smack in the middle of summer and you got a leather jacket. I mean, just list it. Someone's going to buy it. Go on, go on eBay right now and, and see how many, you know, uh, summer items are selling. Like you'll be surprised. Right. So, totally agree. Anyways, um, if you guys want to follow, follow Jason Moore, where can they find you? You can find me on my YouTube channel at Prof Sales, P R O F Sales, or you can find me on Facebook, the Rebels of Reselling Facebook group. You've got some awesome live videos, man. Your channel's been <laughs> blowing up pretty well. I was looking the other day, and you're consistently getting 1,000, 2,000 views on every video. And I remember not too long ago, you were getting you know, 50, 100, yeah. 200. So. It's, Car it's Karin. That's my secret weapon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're really doing a great job, man. So I know Thanks. we all appreciate you being a part of the community and appreciate you coming on. Uh, Eric, uh, you want to say your, your closing statement 
Um, anything you want to say to the peeps watching? 251 people watching live. Wow. No, we appreciate everyone that comes out here to watch this, um, taking time out of what day is it? Thursday in the States? Thursday, Thursday evening? It's Friday yeah, yeah. morning here. Thursday evening. Um, if you do want the text version of just the 11 things, we will be putting a blog post up on the website. If you haven't already, get the 100 Amazing, amazing Items to resell. The first link in the description box. There is that little thing I was telling you about in there about the three the 3D emblem shirts is not in in the guide, but that's what you need to kind of apply to the Harley Davidson part of the guide when you see that. So do do note that we do appreciate exactly. everyone coming out to see this. Uh, and uh, I know I said I was going to mention all these, uh, summarize them. I'm actually going to put these in the description right after this show. So if you guys want to just get a real quick resource. Um, I'll put that in there as well. Also on the greenroomuniversity.com blog. We'll put that up there uh, in addition. But yeah, thanks everyone for watching, guys. Be sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. Share this video with a friend if you can. And we look forward to seeing you guys in the next live show. So have a great day, guys. Keep on picking and making that money. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Peace. everyone. Deuce. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Steve Rakin here over at rakinprofit.com. Coming back to you guys with another video on a Friday night. And I wanted to make this video for the folks out there who are interested or are already selling clothing on eBay. And I want to talk about 10 clothing brands, but I'm going to dive a little deeper into each individual brand a little more, show some examples that will, like I could guarantee you that if you find these items I'm going to share with you, it will make you money selling on eBay in 2018. Like literally I could give almost like a hundred percent guarantee. If you buy these items at the right price, I would say five to 10 bucks. If you get them for five bucks or less at a thrift store or a garage sale or at a flea market, I could almost guarantee that you're going to make money. Now I do want to say each and every brand is different. And all because I say a brand like Ralph Lauren or Brooks Brothers, it doesn't mean every single item within that brand is created equally, okay? There's many different factors to consider such as size, seasonality, the material. Is it short sleeve, long sleeve? Does it have an embroidery? So on and so forth. There's a million and one different factors. So I do need you to take everything I say with a grain of salt. And make sure to study each item a little bit more. But these specific items I'm going to be sharing with you guys on the next page, like literally, if you get them for sub five bucks, and even a lot of them sub 10 bucks, you're going to make money. And I'm not talking making like four or five, six bucks, like making pretty good cash. You know, a lot of people are looking for ways to make money. And one of the best ways is just going to thrift stores, garage sales, even flea markets, consignment stores, some, some of them are very expensive. And buying these undervalued clothing items and flipping them on eBay. Now, you might be thinking, who's going to buy used clothing on eBay? Millions of people are buying used clothing on eBay. Why? Because clothing is really expensive in retail stores, okay? You could be spending 50, 60, 70, 80 dollars for an item, and someone will happily go on eBay for 30, 40 bucks and pay it. And that's half the price. And then there's items that are super rare, high. High end designer brands that are five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. And I'm going to show some examples of some blazers and sport coats and suits that could be well over a thousand dollars that you could pick up for five, six, eight bucks and flip them for two, three hundred dollars or eighty, ninety five dollars. So this is going to be a pretty fun show. It's going to probably be about 15 or 20 minutes. It's not going to be very long. Uh, it is Friday night over here. So I'm going to keep this pretty precise and just give you guys all the gold nuggets. But if you're watching live right now, I want you to shout yourself out. I'm going to go into the comments really quick, and then we'll dive into the show. So we got a bunch of people here right now. We got Alt World 2018 saying, first, you are first. Congratulations. We got No Life 2692. We have Kristen in the house, Eric, Harley. We've got Darren. What's up, everybody? Good to see you. And I do want to say right now, guys, um, I'm going to pick... I'm going to pick two winners, okay, probably in about 15 minutes, and I'm going to give you one of my clothing courses, okay? You want to know what? I'm going to give away two men's clothing mastery courses, okay? That's a program that I have, and it teaches you pretty much everything that you need to know about clothing. It's It includes like eight or nine different 
eBooks of mine that are like valued over like probably like six, 700 bucks, 40, 50 videos. So I'm going to give away two of those men's clothing mastery courses. I'm just writing it down. So I remember to choose some winners. So hang out for about 15 minutes. And at the end of 15 minutes, I'm going to pick a winner, but what you need to do right now is hit that like button and comment and say, I'm excited for the show. Okay. So hit the like button, comment, say, I'm excited for the show, or just say hello. Let me know where you're from. And uh, I'm going to be picking two winners. So if you think that's cool, I think it's cool. Uh, stick along and let's have some fun. Okay. So let's dive right into the show and let's get into these 10 clothing items that could pretty much guarantee, I could pretty much guarantee you that you'll make money if you buy correct. Okay. So again, guys, just know that each item within the brand is created a little bit differently. So you are going to have to do your research. Not every single jams world is going to sell for $139 as you could see in this example. So I just want to say that, but these brands are really good. And can make you money. Okay. So the first brand is Jams World. This is a crazy brand, guys. The design is almost like somebody was at like a painting class, took a whole bucket of paint and just threw it on the shirt. Okay. That's what these designs of these shirts look like. They're crazy. They're funky. They're weird. They're odd. They're unique. And those are the types of clothing items that sell really well. Jams World is it's a crazy brand. You're not going to find it all the time. I might have found it six or seven times over the last three or four years. Um, actually it's been like five or six years times flying. Right. Um, but it's out there. You'll find them. A lot of times they're short sleeve. Uh, you're not always going to find them with like a specific theme like this one. It looks like it's like a fish or something on it. And I think that's why it went for so much because rare, unique items combined with like a specific theme, especially like an animal always tends to do really well, but jams world. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures, really wacky, unique, item right here, size medium sold for $139 right here. Okay. And if you look in the description, they've got a little, uh, picture of the measurements, which is really cool. Awesome brand right there, guys. Jams world. Let me know in the comments. Have you guys ever heard of this brand and have you ever purchased it? Because this brand right here, guys is absolutely killer. Kareen Marie says there's a lot of jams world in Florida. Yeah, I'm in Connecticut and I don't find it all the time, but it's definitely an awesome brand. So be on the lookout for Jams World. Take some notes, guys. Write these down and go into the sold listings afterwards and study them up. Sold listings, you just go to eBay, put in a keyword, and then on the left-hand side, there's sold listings. It just shows you everything that's sold and the prices, okay? And then you can filter it out. Great, great brand right there. Next thing I want to share with you is a brand called Brooks Brothers. Now, Brooks Brothers creates all different types of items, okay? They have pants and shorts and blazers and sport coats and suits and they've got everything. They've got hats, ties, all different types of accessories, okay? Not every single Brooks Brothers item is going to make you money, okay? But if you find items like this, this is a Madras patchwork design style, uh, sport coat, I guess you can call it. And, uh, it's 48 long right here. Really weird and unique. Again, it's colorful. It stands out. It shouts out to the world. Hi, look at me. I'm different. Those are the types of clothing items that sell really well. Now I've probably come across, I don't know, seven or eight of these in, in, in the field out in the wild. And this patchwork Madras style item right here, uh, in terms of Brooks brothers, they also come in shorts and in like golf pants or just pants. I don't know what you want to call them. Those do well, but I've noticed that these sport coats with this speci specific patchwork style tend to do really well. Now, Ralph Lauren also has a similar, uh, patchwork style as well. I'm not sure if they have it in the sport coats, but I know they have it in the, um, like the golf pants and the shorts and stuff, but definitely a cool item right here. 48 long two button front, four buttons on cuffs. It's got the single single rear vent. And of course, all the measurements are there, including the length armpit to armpit, and then the sleeve length from base of collar to cuff. And then there's the shoulder measurement. So pretty much all the measurements that you would need, I guess you could include the waist measurement across the buttons if you wanted to, but no big deal right there. $95. Another cool item to look out for in terms of higher end stuff like blazers, sport coats, and suits is look for the navy blue blazers that have the gold buttons. Those do really, really well. Next up is a 
ordinary looking shirt. To the untrained eye, you may think to yourself, there's nothing special about this Ralph Lauren polo uh, long sleeve striped shirt. But if you zoom in and take a closer look, you're going to see a, well, you're going to see a couple things. You're going to see the, the two words polo sport which is a sign right there that this thing might be a little older or it could have a little bit more value. For some reason, polo sport tends to do a little better. But the big thing that you're looking for right here, and when it comes to Ralph Lauren polo, this is rare. You're not going to find this all the time. Look for the bear, okay? That bear, I don't see a bear right there. You want to know what I see? I see freaking money, okay? This is money. There's nothing really special about this item. It's just an ordinary long sleeve polo shirt, but that bear right there took this item from selling for maybe 20 to $25 to $75. The bear plus Ralph Lauren equals money. Okay. And I just smacked my elbow on the table. I got so excited. So there's the tag right there. Nothing, you know, out of the ordinary right there, just a long sleeve Ralph Lauren bear item, but 75 bucks right there. Anything with Ralph Lauren with a bear is going to make you money. I mean, anything. Next up is a brand that I love. Like literally if you had to ask me like, what are your top 10 brands of all time? Like this is going to be probably coming in like maybe top five or six. I don't know. It's a great brand. Patagonia, well known for their outdoor athletic, pretty much athletic outdoor gear. They make all types of items. They're most uh, popular for like their jackets, but also they make really nice vests. And here we have a, a little puffer vest. It's a thin style puff vest and it looks like let's go through the details really quick what size is this this is a size large they got all the measurements right here obviously no sleeve measurement because there is no sleeve but patagonia is a killer brand if you could find any patagonia item whether it's a vest or a jacket that has this puff style to it it's going to make you money okay it is going to make you money i have probably sold 20 or 25 of these over the last four or five years anywhere from $50 upwards to $200. There's different styles and designs. I'm not an expert when it comes to Patagonia, uh, but do your research. These Patagonia items are absolutely killer. Okay. I want you guys to put a P in the comments right now. If you agree that Patagonia is the, it's the best, it's one of the best clothing brands out there. I mean, there's so many Patagonia types of items out there that can make you money. It's ridiculous. Go into the sold listings, look up Patagonia, but I like, I love this brand. You are amazing, Patagonia. Next item I want to share with you is a brand called Barber, okay? Specifically, what you want to be looking for, this is like the pinnacle. This is like the top of the mountain. This is like, you know, if you find this type of item, you're going to make some money. The waxed jackets. I've only found two of these, okay? They're not going to be out there in the wild for the taking every single day, every single month, every single year. Like these things are pretty rare. Um, I forget where this brand is from. Let me see if I could find the tag. Let's see. What does it say? I'm not sure where this is made. I forgot. Um, but I feel like it was a cool place. I don't think it was in the United States. I think it was like the UK or something. Anyways, uh, this sold for $135. This wax jacket, I don't know. Like, I don't understand the purpose of it. I think it's like a rain jacket or some type of outdoor water repellent jacket. It's a wax jacket. But look for this tag right here, okay? Not everything Barber is going to be killer, but they are known mostly, I would say, for their jackets. I'm not an expert when it comes to this brand, but I've sold quite a few different items. The polo shirts and like the uh, t-shirts don't really tend to do as well as the jacket, specifically the waxed jacket. It's got a very strange material. I remember, I don't know, maybe three years ago, I came across this exact item in a Salvation Army. I'm in Connecticut. I was in a town called Newington. It was the Berlin Turnpike. It's this long road that has a Salvation Army, a Goodwill, and a Savers on it. I remember going into the Salvation Army and I found this brand. I was, you know, I was... I don't know, maybe it was four years ago. I was experienced, but I didn't know like that much as much as I know now. And I saw this jacket. I'm like, this thing looks like it's been like destroyed. Like it's really weird and odd. Like it felt different. I looked it up and I researched it and I'm like, holy crap, jackpot. And I sold that item for like 100, 130 bucks, something like that. This one sold for 135, um, but definitely a great item to be on the lookout for. And I want to know in the comments, has anybody here ever flipped a barber wax jacket before? Ben? Arcella is saying Barbara is the UK. That's what I thought. Yeah, Darren is saying wax is water repellent. Made in England. Awesome, awesome. Hey, Rosie, I've already subscribed, but this is my first live show. Everybody welcome Rosie. This is her first live show. Maybe Rosie's going to win 
a free course today. That would be pretty cool. Uh, the quality product says no. Well, be on the lookout for it. You might find it. We got a lot of peas in the comments. So people are loving Patagonia. Jennifer Haven says, super excited to be a part of the live show. It's my first live show. Well, welcome, Jennifer, to the first live show. You have been officially featured on the Rake and Profit show. <laughs> Everyone's welcoming Rosie. Okay, cool. Let's get into the next uh, clothing brand. This is a brand that's very interesting. Okay, the brand is Oxford Clothes. Now, when you're looking this up in the sole listings, don't forget to type in the two X's. Okay, I think there's something that's Oxford Clothes with one X. If I remember something similar, um, but look, look up this brand right here, Oxford clothes. Okay. Um, I don't have a whole lot to say about it. I don't know a lot about the history of it and whatnot, but all I know is I've had a lot of good experience selling the suits. The suits tend to sell really well now, probably sold maybe, I don't know, 12 or 13 of them over the last three or four years. So when I say I have a lot of experience, I guess I don't have a ton. Um, but this brand, it used to sell for a lot better. Like it would really, really sell fast before, but I think people have kind of caught on to it a little bit more. I don't know the exact reason. Um, but this is an interesting brand. If we take this and we copy it and we paste it into, uh, you know, we'll just type it in Oxford close. Type that into the, uh, sold listings. We'll just, we'll just hit suit and hit sold. Um, You'll see that these, I usually do buy it now because I don't, I don't really trust the auctions, but anyways, um, you'll see these things are selling best offer under 149, 199. These are just the buttons and that's a cool little hack guys. If you have a thrift store in your area that just like throws out all their clothing or like they sometimes have fill a bag day, you can just load everything up, find these suits, especially the Brooks brothers ones and pull the buttons off. You could see sell them, um, in lots. Okay. I haven't done this in a long time. So do your research, but here's one that sold for, it was a best offer under 36 best offer under 137, 129, 65, 59, 39, 79, 49, 189 best offer under 890. I mean, it's a really good brand. I don't, like I said, I don't have a ton to say about it. Just buy it. If you find it, buy it. But one thing I want to mention when you're buying suits, you really got to spend some time inspecting it. There's a lot of things that could be wrong with a suit. Yeah, the payoff is huge on a suit. Typically, the uh, the investment's going to be a little higher as well, and it'll, for the most part, take a little longer to sell compared to like other types of clothing items. But there's a lot of things that could be wrong with a suit. Okay, um, go through and check all the buttons. You know, lift up the. Um, both arms, make sure there's no holes under the armpits. You're going to want to look inside the suit at the lining. Um, there's a lot of different things. Just go through it. I've got some videos. I'm not going to spend too much time on how to inspect suits right now, but there's a lot that could go wrong with a suit. So if you are going to pay up, make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, next item that is literally, I could guarantee you right now, if you were to find this item and you spent less than $30, you're going to make money, probably even less than 50 bucks. You're going to make money. These multicolored uh, Kuji sweaters, kind of like the Biggie, you know, the hip hop rapper or Bill Cosby. He used to wear these all the time. These things sell like hotcakes and they sell for a lot of money. I don't know why they, uh, they're they pretty crazy. I think I saw Reezy Resells giving a presentation wearing one of these. He was looking crazy, but you know what? He is a crazy son of a gun and that's why we love him. Um but yeah, 250 bucks right there, guys. Let me show you a couple pictures and maybe bring you into the tag. Let's zoom in. You see that tag right there, Kuji? Not everything Kuji is going to make you money, okay? I said that before. I'm going to say it again. Not everything Kuji is going to make you money. Not everything Ralph Lauren is going to make you money. Not everything Brooks Brothers is going to make you money. The same even with Oxford clothes if the item has a flaw. Uh, but if you find these multicolored, weird, bright, freak show sweaters or, or sweatshirts, um, they're going to make you good money. Okay. They're going to make you good money. This sold for 250 buckaroos right here. I want to know guys, if you were to find this item for five bucks at a thrift store and trust me, it's possible. I've been in the reselling game for a long time. We've come across them. I've seen countless others come across them. If you sold this for 250 and you made a solid 180 bucks profit, what would you do with the money? If you made $180 profit tomorrow, you bought it tonight, you sold it, shipped it out tomorrow. It was in your PayPal account. What would you do that with that $180 profit? I'm looking in the comments right now. I want to know exactly what 
you would do. Okay. Let's see what you guys would do with that money. Hey, what's going on? Pittsburgh Mike. Pittsburgh Mike is a uh, stone cold clothing killer. We met up in Pittsburgh a couple years ago. Good guy. Definitely super knowledgeable. Huzan would say I would buy a biggie CD. Teresa would reinvest it. Marvin got to love it. Reinvest, 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 buy more clothes. So we have some smart hustlers on. <laughs> oh man. We got someone who's going to buy a Corvette. Super cool. Hey, nothing much. Pit Pittsburgh Mike just hanging out, shooting this video and uh, getting ready for a softball game in about an hour. So I got to keep moving here, guys. But uh, all right, let's get into the next item right here. Uh, Harley Davidson, guys, no brainer. I'm sure if you've been in the game for a while selling clothing, you know about Harley Davidson. Uh, the, lever the leather jackets are like the pinnacle. If you have anything with like an embroidery or like 50th anniversary, like those things are going to make you like a crap load of money. Not everything's going to make you a ton of money with Harley Davidson, especially if it's like bland and plain. There are some vintage t-shirts. I'm not a vintage t-shirts expert when it comes to Harley Davidson. We got Pittsburgh Mike in the house, so feel free to bounce some questions off of him or follow him on YouTube. Um, he probably knows a little bit more than I do, but there's some specific t-shirts that can sell for a lot of money within this brand. But look for the name, the text written out on the shirt. It's going to make you more money. Um, embroideries is going to make you more money. Leather is going to make you more money. Uh, a lot of these thrift stores know about this brand. And uh, I've never come across this firefighter, you know, style coat before based on these keywords, uh, but definitely an awesome brand, pretty guaranteed to make you money. Another brand, and this is a jeans brand that I could almost guarantee that you will make money with. Um, now there are different kind of uh, styles and different names associated with the brand diesel. Some are going to sell for more. Some are going to sell for a little bit less. Uh, do your research. Uh, but when it comes to jeans and it comes to making money selling on eBay, diesel is one of the best, the best brands. Okay. Um, I like to buy the diesel brands, uh, the diesel jeans that have the fly, um, the little, the button flies instead of the zipper. Those tend to do really, really well, but look those up on eBay guys. This sold for $89. I've sold probably, I don't know, 40 or 50 of these. Uh, diesel brand jeans, and they've sold anywhere between some of them sell for like 20 or 30. There's like lower end ones that have kind of like a different tag. Um, but do your research, guys. An awesome brand right there. And last but not least, guys, one of the best brands that you could come across is Loro Piana. Okay. Loro Piana. If you type that in to sold listings, just like I am doing right now. And you go under sold and let's just go under used. We don't want to be looking at new items right now. And uh, hey guys, just so you know, probably within five minutes, I'm giving away two men's clothing mastery courses. Okay. So I'm going to talk to you guys about that in a second. Just giving away pure value guys. That's it. No opt-in, no anything like that. So uh, Laurel Piana. Okay. What is going on here? All right. So one thing you're going to notice is Laurel Piana is associated with a bunch of other brands. For example, Brooks Brothers. Sometimes you'll see Laurel Piana as the fabric uh, creator, I believe, in these different brands and whatnot. But pretty much anything Laurel Piana is going to make you really good money, especially when it's just Laurel Piana by itself and it's not associated with anything else. Like here we have a, I don't know if it's a sweater or what, I'm not going to click in, but that sold for $85. Brooks Brothers gold button blazer. Um, I'm going to assume that Laurel Piana is associated with it in terms of the fabric. 169. Definitely an awesome brand, guys. Look for the cashmere sweaters. They do well. Um, there are some dress shirts out there. I've only come, ac come across a couple of them, um, but definitely an awesome brand. Even the pants, the dress pants, they do really, really well. So those are the 10 brands, guys. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button. But what I want to do right now is I want to give away two courses. Okay. And I'm just giving them away and I'm going to pretty much ask a question. Okay. I'm going to ask two questions and what you guys are going to do is you're going to answer them. And then I'm going to go through and just randomly pick a winner. Okay. So this men's clothing mastery course that I have, I don't really promote it very much. If you guys know me, I pretty much just like to make free videos and if people find it, they find it. But this men's clothing mastery course is a video course that has about 50 to 60 videos. 
You're going to get all of my eBooks, 101 killer clothing brands, 102 killer clothing brands. Uh, you're going to get some shoe guides. You're going to get a whole bunch of stuff, guys. You can check it out afterwards. I'll put the link uh, down below if you guys want to check it out. Um, I'm going to have to do that after, but let me just give it away, guys. So I want to ask you guys a question, okay? What was the favorite? What was your favorite clothing brand that you learned about today? Maybe you already knew about it. One of the 10 clothing brands that I mentioned, I want to know which one did you like the most or which one do you like the most? I'm going to give you guys about one minute to put your answers in the feed. And then I am going to choose a random winner. And then I'm going to give you guys instructions for how to claim the prize. Okay. So I'm going to just take some notes really quick. Be sure to write down the person's name who wins and we'll have some fun. So we see a lot of brands coming in. Coogee, Brooks Brothers, the Barber Wax Jacket, Dahlia liked Patagonia. Sam's a big Coogee fan. Tiffany likes cookie. Okay. Cookie. I like cookies as well. I'm, I'm trying to diet. I think you mean Coogee. <laughs> um, Asad likes Coogee. So a lot of people like the Coogee right there. Super cool. And I want to let you guys know, okay, I'm going to choose a winner, but you got to hit that like button. Okay. You got to show some love for this video. Okay. So I am going to give you guys 10 more seconds and I am going to go through and I am going to just start scanning. So you should be able to see my screen right now. So what I'm, I'm doing is just scrolling up and down, up and down. I know there's no real better way to do it, but I'm going to just go through right now and I am going to pick somebody five, four, three. I'm not looking two, one, boom. Okay. We got a winner right here. Dahlia is the winner. So I am going to write your name down. Okay. And I am going to probably open you up in a secondary. It's not going to let me do that. Anyways, what I'm going to need you to do, Dahlia, is send me an email, okay, over at rakenprofit at gmail.com. And what I'm going to need you to do is send a screenshot from inside your YouTube account, okay? And I might require some more stuff from you to verify it. But what I need you to do is send me an email at rakenprofit at gmail.com. Verify your identity, and I'm going to hook you up with men's clothing mastery. So everybody congratulate Dahlia. She is the first winner. And now we are going to choose a second winner. Okay. And I want to know guys, what question should I ask? Okay. I want to hear what you guys think I should ask for a question. And then I'm going to ask that question and somebody's going to win. Okay. Somebody's going to win a second a second course. So I want to know what question do you guys think I should ask you guys? I am going to flip the script on you guys. Okay. That's how I like to roll. Keep you guys guessing. So everybody is congratulating Dahlia. That's awesome. That's a great question. Okay. Who's in? I am going to ask that question. Okay. So the second question, and this is going to give you guys a chance to win the men's clothing mastery course as well is where are you going sourcing this weekend? Okay. So over the next couple of days, it's Friday today, Saturday and Sunday, where do you plan on going sourcing? And for the folks who are brand new, take notes because this is where you want to go to find the profit. The people that are watching right now, there's a good majority of them who are part-time to full-time resellers making a full-time living online right now, selling on platforms such as eBay and Amazon and Poshmark. There's people who are drop shipping. There's people who are private labeling and there's people who are, you know, doing retail arbitrage. So many opportunities out there right now. So what I'm going to do is give you guys 10 more seconds and I am going to start flipping through the comments. Okay. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, boom. I am going to choose Kim Lewis because I chose this one right here, but that really didn't have anything to do with the question. So Kim Lewis, I am going to choose you as the second winner. I don't know who you, who you are, Kim, but I have a feeling that you are going to enjoy this course. So congratulations to Kim Lewis and Dahlia. Okay. What I need you guys to do is take screenshots from inside your YouTube account 
to verify your identity. I'm going to need you to send those screenshots over to rakenprofit at gmail.com and type in the email that you are the winners of the Men's Clothing Mastery Course Giveaway on Friday, June 22nd. And then we will uh, hook you guys up with those courses, get you guys enrolled, and uh, hopefully you will apply yourself to those courses and take the information inside and make you money. I can guarantee you guys, if you go through those courses, you're going to make a lot of money. Okay. It's proven it works and, uh, you just got to put the effort forward. So I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank everybody for, um, attending and, and learning with me. It's always a lot of fun making these videos. Hopefully you'll learn something about these 10 clothing brands and hopefully you apply yourself because if you do, you will, make money. So Teresa, I just want to let you know, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'm going to definitely have a good softball game. Coin immunity is being a, uh, awesome guy by, um, I think it's a, I can't tell if it's a guy or a girl. Sorry. The avatars are really small. No disrespect, but congratulations to the winners. They're saying Jennifer Haven. Good to see you. UFC. Congrats, Kim. DJ Foster. Thank you. Thank you. Trendy by Tina. Congratulations, Kim. Awesome. Yes. Kim Lewis is like, yeah, that's awesome. So uh, appreciate you guys. Have an amazing day. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you found value in it, if you didn't find value in it, well, you want to know what screw it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, if you didn't find value in it, you know, I'm always open to suggestions. Let me know what I can do to improve these videos. But, uh, Thanks for watching, guys. Have an amazing, safe weekend. Go out there, hit those yard sales, garage sales, thrift stores, and get your butt listing so you can make some money. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.